Hello, everybody. Welcome to Real Shade, the movie uh, review podcast where we shit on movies and talk about ridiculous stuff while lovely art is being drawn up at the top left and in the middle of the corner by our lovely resident artist, Derry. Yay! And I'm shitty critic, uh, Jamie. Woo! And there's uh, Darren, researching man and man that shakes his hands like this. Welcome to a wonderful podcast. This week is episode nine. We've made it. We've made it to episode... No, we're nearly in double digits, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so thanks very much for coming along with us. Uh, this week, we're going to be looking at the movie Wizard of Oz. And uh, it's my pick this week, which I'm very happy about. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about the movie of why I personally have picked it and why I think it's a really good choice. And, uh, and then we'll go around the room and, and have a little discussion and we'll get right into it. Before we start, remember to subscribe. We're going to be on YouTube. Um, we'll have the full video up during the week and then we'll have little snippets of it uh, throughout the rest of the week. Uh, do feel free to comment, subscribe and watch and uh, even make suggestions for movies. Yeah, we want all of that good stuff. And uh, yeah, we're on Twitch again every Sunday um, about 7 o'clock. Uh, join us, have a few beers and do a little bit of shit talking. Yeah. So uh, let's get into it, as, as Philip DeFranco would say. Um, so, uh, so yeah, Wizard of Oz, 1939. <laughs> I really enjoyed this film, very much so. Um, it's one of my favorites, actually, uh, specifically because of the way the story takes you through, the cinematography, the sets, and um, the acting. I think we were just discussing before the podcast, just the variety of acting, and you have a very small cast that's just... Mwah, perfect. Um, so, a little bit about the film. Uh, let's go to uh, lovely IMDb for our lovely summary of the week. Uh, <laughs> Dorothy Gale is swept away from a farm in Kansas to a magical land of Oz in a tornado and embarks on a quest with her new friends to see the wizard who can help them return home to Kansas and help her friends as well. <laughs> One of the better descriptions. They've had yeah. 60 years to write that, so, you know. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah, like, I guess so. You know, see the wizard who can help her return home to Kansas and help her friends as well. Yeah, it's bland. Yeah. I'm going to give that a two out of five. <laughs> oh, we started rating IMDb descriptions. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I'm rating IMDb's this, re- this summaries of movies. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, yeah. So this week... Let's start with uh, a little bit of a chatter about Wizard of Oz. Very controversial movie. And we do like a little bit of controversy here. Um, we have a, a few things. Like p- people were burned badly in this movie. Um, I think um, there was someone that got, what, like really bad like skin disease after wearing the, uh, the tin man makeup. Yeah. Horrible stuff. But mm-hmm. that's what you got to go through in Hollywood to make a gem art. such as this. Stuff art. for your art. <laughs> Real <laughs> art. <laughs> fucking up people's <laughs> actual lives from years yeah. and years to come. Oh, fucking up their lives. Like, not just their moment in the spotlight, but their lives. Yeah. Thank you, Wizard of Oz. Uh, well. So, Darren, what did you think of The Wizard of Oz? You've seen it before. Every, everybody's seen it, right? Everybody's seen it. Yeah, I, don't, I think it's one of those movies that... Everyone has seen it, man. I don't know if there's anyone who hasn't seen it. I enjoyed it. Like, I knew I was going to enjoy it when you said it. Like, I knew it's not one of those movies you're like, oh, no, not the Wizard of Oz. Like, I wouldn't sit down and watch it on a regular basis. But I mean, like, say Christmas and stuff. If I seen it there, I wouldn't like, and I was sitting down, I wouldn't be devastated if it was on. I actually enjoyed it. And I enjoyed it now again because, like, you know, when you're looking for stuff, because it's worth, this podcast is mess me up because I can't just watch a movie anymore. I'm <laughs> looking for things to say. But um no man, I enjoyed I enjoyed everything about it. I enjoyed the acting. The acting was amazing. Oh it's such good I keep saying this phrase, all Hollywood actors, but like these guys are theatre actors. These guys are like a proper dancer, singers, 
fucking amazing. Um, stage actors, real stage actors. Yeah, and I think this is like 1939 like, when it's just like yeah. the overlap. Yeah, but this way this movie is so good. When you see it on stage, you don't really see a compar- like obviously the sets and stuff. I mean, but like you don't really see a comparison of the acting because it is a stage movie. Like you know, what I mean, it is Has what this they. Ever been? Maybe I'm asking a really stupid question. Has this ever been done on stage? I've seen Wicked. Okay. I've seen Broadway. Oh, yeah. uh, or the, the no, West End. Yeah, this is this is done on stage. This is I don't know if it's run on Broadway. I don't know if it's, hmm. but I've I've seen like I've seen about. Do you know what? I've seen more like school adaptations, <laughs> like, you know. But it's a, it's awesome, and it's actually it's a great show. If you've never seen it, Jamie, I would I recommend either putting it on <laughs> or, do, or in casting me as or Dorothy. Taking it off. Yeah. Um. I, but no, I enjoyed it, man. I enjoyed every character. And I enjoyed the beautiful sets, the transitions. I enjoyed. Do you not know enjoy the music? The music. Oh yeah, the mu- yes, the music. Beautiful. Like I wouldn't. Think of this as a musical, essentially. Like I wouldn't. Personally. I know there's a lot I, of music. I wouldn't in it. either. Mm. No, I am. Um, but I do like. There's not. I was looking the other day, and even what I love about it is even the background characters are fantastic. Like the costumes alone, everything in this movie is fucking amazing. So much detail, so, yeah. Like yeah, but even for back then, like. Like if that movie's like they try to do it now with obviously like the Oz, oh, Great and Powerful, they and all did. those adaptations. Yeah. Yeah, they do. But like they don't. They don't do like the CGI kills it for me, mm-hmm. and what kills me is it's the vision, the vision of it. Because if they did a movie like that now, without with all practical effects and all hand drawn sets, no one would watch it because they're like, no, it doesn't have that fucking charm. No, it needs like Drew Garland. Here's the thing: I think that if a film came out and did such a thing like that, the story would be abysmal and the characters would be bad. Like yeah, they yeah, put yeah. so much dead. They'd they'd have historians probably coming in yeah. studying I this think... and they'd overdo that part like the um the artist yeah i've never seen it but all i got all i know about it is there's a famous dog in it and uh, it's black and white i've nothing i don't know nothing about the story and that's all they praised about this film so if a film came out like this nowadays its main attraction would be wow all the st- Sets are hand painted, not like it's a fantastic film because of all of these yeah. things. I think the closest yeah. you're going to get these days is a, a pure Disney production. I'm not talking yeah. like the Marvel or anything like that. I'm talking like actual That's Disney sense. core production, animation, like which is the closest that you get now to having that musical vaudeville sort of you know triple mm. threat talent sort of yeah. thing that would have been from the stage actors back then. So, um, like Derry, I, did you? Go on, no, so go ahead, go ahead. Go I don't on. know what you're going to say, Darren. No, because I'll, I'll just keep on talking. So just, <laughs> I'm going to cut you off. Stop yeah. talking right now. <laughs> yeah, I just mute. Yeah, okay, I'll give you a chance um, to talk, Darren. So, da- uh, Derry, um, again, I always ask this every week because I am i don't have any, you know, little kids of my own. Did anybody watch this with the kids? Has any, anybody's kids seen this? I didn't this time, but I have watched it a couple of times with the kids, oh, yeah. I, yeah, what, what's the kids' oppression? What, what's, who, are, are the kids down with this, are down with this <laughs> kind of thing? Do the kids even say down with this <laughs> thing? I mean, mine are, mine are young enough that they still, like the, that whole, I'll say Disney vibe of the mm. musical and the color and all that still mm. kind of appeals to them. My little girl mostly, obviously, because she's, she's the kind of kid who's going to be in musicals when she grows up anyway. <laughs> um, just drama. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, they loved it, and they think it's hilarious because I always call them Munchkins as well. So, that <laughs> like, little oh, people. Okay. Um, look, I don't know. Darren pretty much said it all, really. I think mm-hmm. it's it's an iconic movie. I don't think there's anyone that can dislike this movie. I like, don't know. They're, they're out there. Oh really? Yeah. There's. I don't know. I, just, I bet people people would have said that with one one flew over the cuckoo's nest. There's no one out there that could have possibly disliked that film. Hi. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. No. I. So, I, uh, I just think it's very. It's. It's easy to digest in that sense. But obviously, yeah. it's. It's a. It's a spectacle. It's the, the technicolor and all that is just amazing. And yeah. there's a very hard place to not like it. I think like even yeah. if you like it, you'd find some aspects of it that you would like. I mean, you. You have to respect. I'm going to challenge myself to have some dislikes in this film. Because there is some things that I don't like about this film. Okay. I don't like how it's put together. Oh, okay. So let's, there's, I'm going to separate the horrible yeah, treatment exactly. of all the actors and the sexual exactly. harassment and all, all of the horrible things. 
you guys <laughs> ha- have a better mind than that, and I can comment and laugh a little bit. Um, but okay. I'm talking about the film here. I'm talking about the, oh, yeah. the content of the film. Exactly. And then I have a little bit of art from the artist, we'll say. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I have no problem with doing that. Um, so let's get stuck in. Um, so we open up with a, even better than a credit roll, a little paragraph yeah, yeah. about the story. So, well, I'll, I'll give it a read for those listening at home. Uh, for nearly 40 years, this story has given faithful service to the young. I love, right, they're capitalizing things all over the place willy nilly in this. So, to the young in heart. Uh, and time has been perilous to put its kindly philosophy out of fashion. Uh, Jesus Christ, if it th- it, 1939 things were out of fashion. What are they now? Uh, to those of you who have been faithful to, uh, to it in return. And I think this movie was, what, 39 years afterwards, because it was written in 1900, the book, Wizard of Oz. By the way, we didn't mention that. If you didn't know, that's a book. Um, and to the young in heart. We dedicate this picture. So that's basically old people. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what I love about this movie? The fact that they have, it says it there at the end of it. This movie is not called a movie. It's what's called, what I love, it's called a picture. They don't make movies back then, they make pictures back then. I fucking love that so much. The, the continue. Uh, continue. <laughs> so uh, we... We get a little bit of a, a credit roll, which is nice. Um, and then it kind of sweeps in to Dorothy. We get our protagonist. Um, fantastic. All of what you're seeing there is basically a set, a road, and then a big wall that's been painted. And it looks yeah. fucking amazing. Um, you know, that's, I think that's, back in the days version of cgi it's like we can't go into a place in kansas so let's just paint a big wall i i imagine there's people back in that day going they didn't even really go there they just painted a wall oh god i hate going to films when they just go paint walls like things Ugh. but that wouldn't have been strange at all because it would have been exactly like a stage set so so true so true you wouldn't have had snobs back then not like nowadays um so Dorothy is running through through the the dusty roads of Kansas, where everything is kind of a um, a sepia, it's a sepia tone. A oh bit, gosh! I think. What? So we'll go to the uh, we'll go to the next slide. Next slide. Da- Jerry doesn't like the way I say sepia. This is like a twenty year old argument at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's live. Uh, it's hey Darren, split split the difference. Is it sepia or sepia? You probably didn't even know the word. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. You live there. In the comments, in the chat. In Tell the comments, in the sepia comments. Sepia. What are they going to do? Spell it the same way both times and go. Wait, which one is it? Sepia or sepia? Sepia. What? The fuck is, what? What? Oh, sepia. Right, yeah. sepia. What are you talking about? Exactly. So see the color of of you know it's kind of like an off amber. It's like an oh, off. Oh, okay. The am okay. I would just call that brown. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was no point it's, in having that debate. It's, it's not <laughs> like <laughs> betrayed fucking list. Let's, let's just be honest. It's a brown. It's a, like it's it's a, a fake orange. If anything, it's a specific photography tone that's called okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yeah. right. So for well, um, class. So. Uh, <laughs> Apparently, I don't even say it right, so I don't know. So the uh, Dorothy runs to her aunt and uncle, um, and what? Well, aunt Aunt May? It's Aunt May. It's not Aunt May. Yeah. Who is it? It's Aunt May. Or Annie M. Annie M. Annie M. Yeah. I was thinking of Spider Man. Aunt May. <laughs> oh, that's X Men. So Dorothy, her, they, like those are live chickens. In the thing, and she just mm-hmm. grabs one like willy nilly, and like nobody don't even. But she doesn't even look where she's grabbing. She just grabs it, like and brings it fucking to him. And I'm like, you know, nowadays, like if you even looked at an animal wrong in a movie, they'd be like sued for fucking days. Like. <laughs> yeah, you'd get their lawyers on. Did you manhandle my chicken? You'd have pizza all over you. Yeah, mm, fucking. I was, like, I was looking. I was like, the poor chick. <laughs> she, well, Jesus. I have. I actually. Well, I had to give my chickens away today. Sadly, Aww. because I'm moving. But 
when I had see. my chickens, you get to handle them like that because they are, they're like dinosaurs. They're dinosaurs. You see them walking and going after like bugs and stuff. They're dinosaurs. Uh, little T-Rexes. They're cool. So we get an introduction to um, Eddie M and Uncle, Uncle what's his name? Uncle Henry. Uncle Henry, who's like a smart ass that gets whipped around uh, by his wife, basically. Yeah. Um, you, you can set, see he's like a little troublemaker. Uh, so we then get an introduction to our three, um, I guess, main accompanying yeah. stars, co-stars. Uh, okay, we got brilliant actors. <clears throat> All three so, of them are amazing. This might be a good point to start telling people who people are then. Judy Garland is Dorothy. Frank Morgan, who has yet to be introduced, is um, like everybody else in it. Like IMDb la- lists him as like six other people. He's um, the Wizard of Oz. He's yeah, the he Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ray Bulger is Hunk. And that's the uh, the guy's name, the Scarecrow. Um, there's uh, Bert Lahr, L-A-H-R. Uh, Azik, the Cowardly Lion. And then yeah. Jack Haley as Hickory, the Tin Man. Jack, Jack Haley, I can't remember the guy's name who was actually originally in. That's what we were saying earlier. The guy who that's originally the guy played the Tin stuff. Man in it. He got, like, because he had an allergic reaction, but, like, it caused him to some serious health issues. Like, you know, he was... He was in hospital and he was hospitalized for it. He actually has a large reaction to whatever they sprayed sprayed the tin costume with because parts of it were actually were actually tin. Because you know in the movie when he's like when he starts banging on the chest yeah, like, yeah. and you hear the tin do, 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 do. that wasn't a, that wasn't the sound effect added. That was the tin because the body was full of tin. Um but uh, then they obviously a man couldn't do it because he was hospitalized and they got Jack Healy in. But this is this is what I call the world going perfect. Because he was well, supposed to be the Tin Man. Well, they did. I love, like, I think they got perfect characters to represent um, yeah. the Tin Man and the Lion and uh, the other guy, Scarecrow. Uh, Scarecrow. How dare you? We're getting Scarecrow. So basically, we get to a point where Dorothy has already, like, I think she's running and saying, oh, uh, what's her name once after the dog? That one on the, the Grouchy one. What's her name? This is, um, Oh, we got the name of Gulch. Mrs. Gouch, yeah. Gouch. No, Gouch. Gulch. Gouch. Gouch. Gouch sounds dirty. Um, Mrs. Gouch, yeah. <laughs> Margaret, Gouch. Margaret Hamilton played her. And she got horribly burned as well. You got burned, bitch. She got really badly um, burned. They've all, they've all had something happen to them in this movie. Like the yep. scarecrow. I won't stop him too much. The scarecrow dislocated his knee. You know, when he's doing all the, you know, the dancing with her, and when he, she meets him first, and I was like, for all, like, even as a young lad watching that, I was like, he's really goofy and funny, but he actually dislocated his knee when he actually, um, I'll show you when we get to it, when he spins over, when he, he drops him down first, and he spins over, and he oh, falls yeah, over, yeah. Uh, he actually dislocated his knee. But that he looked did like a pretty sad lot, fall as well. But he did the whole lot of that dance with dislocated knee. Like, what, like, I mean, come Dedication. on, man. What, a, what a fucking champ, like. Seriously. Mm. Uh, and the lion obviously had to wear a lion's dead carcass the whole movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's his failure. That's um, just legendary. So Dorothy's after running away from Miss Gulch and, and she's like, ah, oh, that Miss Gulch, she's trying to take Toto. So she starts wanting to, I don't know, balance on a load of pigs. And they really get fr- like freaked out when she falls in. It's like, oh my God, these pigs are going to eat you. I'm like, shit, are pigs meant to be your that man, scary? Man yeah, but your man, your man is brilliant. Your man jumps in after. He like, no bottle jumps in, then he gets out and he's like sweating and holding on to his heart and he's like, for like 10 yeah, yeah, minutes yeah. he's so <laughs> So they, she falls in yeah. and you kind of find out that he's cowardly and also brave, I guess. They all show a little bit of themselves at this point in the movie. They all give themselves a little bit of their character. Um, He's the cowardly one. I think... When um, Aunt, uh, Auntie M comes along, you see that the Scarecrow, I don't know, he says something that, uh, what is it? Nothing. I know this guy, the Tin Man is like, when, when I was, um, when I'm going to be leading this town or whatever, I think he wants to be the governor, the Tin Man. 
Yeah, when I yeah, yeah, no, Tim Mom wants to be like, yeah. I, I can't remember the words, I can't remember the, the, the line that he says. He yeah. wants to be the, the mayor of this town. And uh, no, Auntie M is like, shut your face, eat a biscuit, <laughs> get your work done. The place yeah. is in a mess. Um, she's whipping everybody. Like, you got a lot of strong female characters in the oh, past, bitch. don't you? So, bitch. So, yeah, like, modern films and you're bitching about Aunt, Aunt May or Aunt M. I'm going to keep on doing that, Aunt May. <laughs> um, there's your strong female character. You're talking about Ripley she from Alien? She your ass, absolutely. Yeah. But there's, like, I don't understand when people say that. That's why I can, I can draw on. You can bring any movie into conversation and tell him I can pick out a strong female character. I like and not even like that, that's not even me taking the piss, that's me generally because I that's when I hate when people say that. There's no strong female characters. And I was like like they talking talk about Star Wars. I won't call another rant but like when they talk about Star Wars and they're like um oh n- no strong female characters I'm like okay um sorry someone came in there. Um when they're on about like Princess Leia and stuff, and I'm like, no, no, there's other strong female characters in the movies. You don't need to pick the lead characters to have a strong what? female character. Every time someone says that, like, it's like, oh, we, you know, we need more strong female characters. I always think of that Futurama episode, that single female lawyer. You know that episode? <laughs> uh, I just think it, they just want lots of single female lawyers. So, but that's it. It's these are strong characters. These are really well represented characters, and. You literally get the feeling that they're not going to give lip back to this little old lady. Um, you know, she's literally, she's the boss. Uh, so she tells him off and Dorothy has a little bit of a biscuit. She's, oh, mm, yummy biscuits. Uh, and then we get the first song. Do, 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 do. Beautiful song. The song. What do you mean? That's the song. But as I said, again, this is what I mean when I say it to you. I don't know if we had this conversation before the thing started, but this is like a perfectly staged, how can I say, it's a perfectly staged song. You just see her walking. You can see her hitting her beats when she's supposed to be at certain parts. And then um, she got poked in the eye by the straw. <laughs> ah! <laughs> really... So but, um, where I wasn't looking. Ah! <laughs> But did yeah, but this is like when I was watching it again and uh, when she started singing I was like, Oh here we go, over the summer the fucking rain and I actually found myself just drifting off listening to the song. Oh, that's it, it stood up perfectly well and mm-hmm. you would think because it's it's what, sixty years old and it's been so Six, everybody this song like No, um, it's more than six still, years old. Yeah eighty years old. What? Eighty, 80 sorry, my mouth is fucking <laughs> her voice, man. They don't they don't have singers like her nowadays. Like, yeah. no matter who you are, no Judy Garland. Just, like, I know you have in days, Indina Mazel, whatever, from Elsa, but like, you don't have singers like Judy. Like, she was, as I keep saying, an old Hollywood singer, but it's that type of singer. Even like Idina Menzel, her voice is, is still quite, there's a, there's a grittiness to her voice, even. Yeah. It's a little bit sharp, whereas Judy had this, Soft. like, really rich, like, yeah. you can't replicate her voice. It's just, it's, there's something, it's like, Fucking funny. It's gorgeous. It's old school American Hollywood singer vaudeville. Like you bring them out on the stage, that's they're ooh, you know, like they're brazing themselves up, you know, di- diaphragm, you know, speaking. Yeah. Of, if you've ever seen them um, singing in the rain, that's the way they uh-huh. just speak, you know, speak from the <clears throat> bottom, enunciate. Yeah. Um, and that's where she came from. That's one of my picks in the future. Not this one, next, but sometime in the future. Because that is a wonderful film. Um, it's a wonderful life. Oh, no, we did that already. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, already. Uh, so we now get a lovely... Hey, check it out on YouTube, people. Subscribe. Get back and watch our fantastic It's a Wonderful Life. That was just before Christmas, I believe. Um, so we now... It, so this is, um, this is also a map painting. You know, when the sun shines through... The yeah. uh, sky when she's singing. Um, I was about to Some say when she's singing and singing in the rain. <laughs> da, 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 da. When she's singing um, the over the version. rainbow. <laughs> I would love that. That'd be great. Hey, oh God! Thank God we live in the future. Someone has to deep fake that. Put Judy Garland's face on Gene Kelly's face, and then put Gene Kelly's face on Judy Garland's face. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um, and you could do something with the voices as well. Judy Garland be tap dancing. Da, da, da. No? 
<laughs> Nobody down for that. I'm down for I that. was thinking more of like a mashup, but oh also, yeah, I just... well I guess so. We could do a mashup. Okay. Um, and then we get so recognizable. Everything in this, like I think, maybe not younger people, maybe you know people probably born in the 21st century, maybe not, but anybody before that, anybody who's into musicals, like like yeah. would know like in instantly. I know you're saying obviously not everyone knows, but I mean, you know, no matter who you are, you know that's a fucking evil sound. That's not a nice fucking, you know, it's, they made, like, back then they made music to make you feel a certain way. Like, that's for a villain. That's a villain soundtrack is what that is. Hmm? She knows. They still they do. They don't do that. No, I feel they nothing. Do it. They don't do it like they used to. Come on now. They do, 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 do. That's a fucking, I, I mean, am sorry, you're every service to every score writer ever. Uh, uh, I don't think so. Every song in this in every song in this film is a recognizable song. Every single one. You now show me a film that has the exact same momentum and f- amazing recognizable films. You'll get one amazing big one, and musical. the rest are crap. Hmm? For a start, it's a musical. Yeah. Uh, so again, I'd have to apply any Disney movie. Any Disney movie. Even Disney movies. Frozen. You got a Let It Go, and that's it. That's all I know. Frozen. I'm a thirty-year-old, exactly, year old man. Then you don't know. I, what do you mean I don't know? Frozen movies are ridiculously catchy, so I will throw yeah, any movie out at that notion. Yeah, of but these are good. It's not the same. Well, music yeah, this, stands this, up right now. Whole, if you look in the room. This is a whole other conversation. I get you know Disney movies are like really fucking. They are catchy. They're so so catchy, but they're they're wrote to be catchy. They're exactly. For people, so is this. Yeah. It's the same they're genre. Wrote, I just think... I think I they do a better job of it in this, then. Yeah. Let it go. Have just Disney movies, have you seen? <laughs> I watch oh. Disney movies. Everybody watches... They, the whole Let It Go thing, I've heard over and over and over and over and over and over again. Like, that's, that's, that was a fucking phenomenon. That was like... That movie... Oh, look, we can go into that now if we want to. We're just not talking this movie. Just, no, but in um, comparison, like, I'm just saying, I yeah. think that has a lot more of a... Um, and oomph, you know, bu- 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 bu. like that's that's just a backing track. And then, like I've talked about this in musicals before, where that's they set the musical the up. They set the musical up with uh, yeah, yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas. They set the musical up with these little past. Bum, 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 bum. Exactly, Nightmare Before yeah. Christmas is a to me a recent film, and they, you know, that's a kind of a modern film. That's fantastic. I'm talking about twenty t- first century, twenty first century, and fuck Disney. Fuck Disney it's because not they're Disney. not fair. It's Disney. That's not fair You're though. They're an outlier. Any other musicals that have been made? I what? What is their cats? The that cats. Count. No, no, no. That, that wasn't Disney. No, that no. wasn't Disney, was it? Are you that talking like was. musicals? What is like? No, look. Let's just leave it at this. This Darren's <laughs> ending the argument. That is <laughs> final word. But no, what I'm saying is this, this soundtrack. This did. Is basically a really, really good way of introducing the character. But before you even see this character, you know she's a fucking evil bitch. You know I'm what I mean? Just... This way, have have you ever seen who writes those um those songs? It's like a bunch of um like sleeved guys in an office with a big whiteboard, like the way they did for um Mary Poppins. It's just like a load of white guys in an office in some Disney fucking office somewhere, just going, okay, come on, uh, what sounds good? And they rap, they go, okay, write that down, did a little bit, and then we'll put that in, and then repeat it. Like, that's all it is. It's it's 100% corporatism. Yeah. But this doesn't feel like it. Like, Mary Cop Poppins was like 100% corporatism. That doesn't feel like it. I'm sorry, you're like biased. It. Feed the birds, feed, that's, Oh, you're like, oh, so sad, and they hate the rich, but it's done by the Disney Corporation, who are a bunch of rich people. That's what I'm saying. Like, we know that it's, you know, that this these songs were done in an age when maybe everything was a little bit more nostalgic, I guess. But um, it has that what little burn. In... <laughs> what? What's he doing? We're on the did 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 a bit. Okay. Did 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 So. 
We're skipping over that topic. Let's go to the next topic. Of man with she's brush in to, hand. Yeah, she's trying to get the dog and put it no, down. She goes for like she goes, um what what does she say? I wish I had it written down now, actually. Where she goes, uh she's trying to tell him that uh, the dog bit her and uh, he takes it up as like what? The man bit you? It's like, why didn't you tell the man? It's like, no, the dog bit me. I think it's like an Albert and Costello kind of thing. It's like, who's on first? Who's on second? Uh, who's on second? No, no. Who's on first? Howie's who's on, on second. Who's on second. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so she's coming along to be a bad bitch and take the dog away. Um, yeah. To do what? To bring him to the pound? Like she's a she busybody. Yeah, put him down. She wants to put the like put the dog in a fucking no, barn. She was uh, an original car, yeah, she was, yeah. Um, but, like, oh my god, you're right. <laughs> but to like to put the dog in a fucking basket, I was like that I was like that fucking poor dog. It's an acting dog, it's a stage dog, it's okay. Yeah, I know. I know but still uh, it's a fucking okay. poor dog. It's not a real dog. <laughs> it's not a real dog, it's the fake actor dog. He doesn't have feelings. No, he just has paychecks. Cold, hard bitches sitting around him. Um, Dorothy brings in the dog and Auntie M um, is... Okay, going... Okay, okay, everybody shut the fuck up. Okay, just give me the... Tell me the story. I got like 20 chickens out there and three men that are eating all my cookies. What the shit's happening? And she's like, oh, I, I, I've got a court... I've got a court order from the sheriff and uh, he's going to take your dog away. I, I love the way she speaks. She just sounds like a complete ass hat. And I've gone down to the sheriff and I've got an order to take him away. And it's like, oh, you, she lives alone. You know, that kind of woman that sits like on the hill. Yeah. Just a bitch. Bitch. Um, and then we get to the dog scene where she puts him in the basket um and dorothy runs away and she's awful awful sad and uh, auntie m turns around and goes if i wasn't a christian woman i'd tell you exactly what i what i thought about you um <laughs> i think that's the best i like there's so many cool little funny uh, bits in this film like the next bit where she turns around, sits down, and she's like giving that look at uh, Uncle uh, Uncle Henry. Henry, yeah. Henry. And then we get the uh, the next. Do, 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 do. Any comments? No, I just think she's a total bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're just going with that. She's just a total bitch. She's a total bitch. What a bitch. So. So we're giving her not as much leeway as we gave Nurse Ratched. No, no. We like no. we like Ratched more than we like the Wicked Witch of the West. I, mean, I, I go for a drink with yeah. Ratches. Fuck her. If I, wasn't, <laughs> if I wasn't such a Christian man, I tell her what to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, even the witch is justified. This one is a fucking cow. Like even the evil fictional version of this woman is actually fine because she's yeah. born evil. I assume. Like she's a witch. And someone just killed her sister. Like. Yeah, you landed a house on my sister. <laughs> Bitch. But no, a dog nibbled at me because I was looking at him sideways. So the dog finally managed... I keep saying the dog, Toto. Yeah, but the, your man, the Scarecrow, says to her, why don't, why don't you just not go that way? <laughs> and you don't have any problems. Like, don't fucking pass our house, you dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically it. And she's like, no, I'm being a stubborn bitch. I want to do it. That'll take me at least five minutes longer. What do I look like? Oh, uh, damn. Toto um, wishes the rains down in Africa and then finally gets back to Dorothy real quick. Um, and then Dorothy's like, okay, now to escape to somewhere where I'll probably only be able to eat what? Like she like packs like probably an apple. And a sandwich, and maybe a bottle of milk. She's not getting far with that. No, you know, no. She doesn't die. She doesn't know that milk. She doesn't die out there. Right. <laughs> hey, that was an Anchorman reference. Milk was a bad choice. Um. So we get to this little scene, and I like this. Um. This again reminds me of like a little stage. 
you know they've obviously like this is all inside they've gotten like big diggers full of dirt and they've emptied it on uh, like a concrete floor and they've somehow managed to make it look amazing like an outside i always thought that with the lighting and everything crazy um this is where we're getting up to oz how are we in the film so far good good man as i said like everything to me was an amazing because this time i'm watching it as like a kind of a critic not to be not just to watch it but i was looking for stuff and like you just said the stuff they've even the lighting on certain things like you see we have here now and you have the or she's going to your she doesn't realize but she's getting to the the wizards and so what's he called he's called the professor Pro- marvel. professor marvel and this is like yeah. the snake the oil oil um oil, snake oil man yeah, yeah, but I mean, even like, even the look of the the sign and like where she's going and the roads and just, you know what it does? It gives you a kind of like a certain feel that you don't get from movies anymore. Like, you know, like, I mean, not that I will fucking feel, but that really just like wanting to go on a journey. And thank God, I've like, I, I can't imagine if you've never seen this movie before. And obviously, if you've never seen it, you'd be like, unless I was doing something like this, I'd be like, no fucking way I'm watching The Wizard of Oz. But I mean, this movie's like, Kind of like the, um, the one of Life, Jim, where it takes you on a fucking journey, man. You know what I mean? It really, really, like this movie does. It does every movie takes you on a journey. is fucking this movie. To well, the that, land of... To, to the land of Oz! The land uh, of Oz! That's what some of the great movies do, though, really. They take you on that journey. And if it's even a very simple one where you're just like, okay, you go to this place, you meet three people, they want to go meet the thing that you want to meet. There's a bit of a kerfuffle. You, you yeah. do it and you're home. That's that's basically yeah, but, it. But even the actor, like I love the fact that he's trying to like he's trying to like fucking um Connor at <laughs> out of money and then he like sends well, her home and... <clears throat> See, I think he's like the uh not anti hero, I think he's like a chaotic good, you know, that kind of a do way. You not, do you not think he's a he con man, no? I think he is a con man to other people, but I think not to her because we we see later that he kind of sees that she's lost and she's run away and he's trying to like use his scamming in for the for for the moral good basically <laughs> yeah um, okay i'll give you that uh like he, he he does the whole he puts on the whole hat thing and he goes yeah. i've been to the, the sands of egypt and i've talked to the Mahasha Harry's of yeah. India and all this kind of stuff. They did, they did in the Oz, the Great Empire with James Franco. They really played up that he was a con man. Like, really. I, oh my I God. I think it tainted him a little bit in that because then it just means that by the end of that movie, he still hasn't grown up, like, developed as a character. Like, yeah, yeah. he's like 60 years of age and he's still trying to con people. I like, yeah, this is. He, I, 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 no, he came across as more of like an opportunist. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that's a um, fancy there. <laughs> no, I don't know, but like Jamie said, sort of a chaotic good, not really no, meaning to do harm. Trying to get by. Seen, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen Wicked, right? Yes. Yeah, I've never seen Wicked. I don't know, Jamie, if you've seen it either. I, so, I went to see it in West End. I saw it in you Dublin. Did? Oh, mm-hmm. well, awesome sauce. Then maybe both of you have a responsibility. So, who is, or who are, I know, uh, in, on Broadway, Christian Chansworth played um, Glenda. She played the good witch of the whatever. But so her name is Indina Medell. Indina, whatever her name is, played, that's the one. She played Elphaba. So yes. is she the same witch that's in this movie? Yes. It's like their backstory. Right. Yeah. So then you look at the Oz, the Great and Powerful, and Mila Kunis played. This character, am I right? No, oh, Mila, Ku- Mila Kunis played the Wicked Witch, but the great and wiz- the w- wonderful great and wizard of shitty CGI <laughs> is is not doesn't tie into Wicked at all. Wicked okay. ends at the start of this film. Right, because I was thinking that because when I watched the Oz Great and Powerful, then when she became evil in that, I was like, "Oh, Wicked! She doesn't start out evil." She's no, just, she's yeah. she's in a wheelchair, and then she's like, "Oh, I'm green now. I okay. people don't it like me because I'm green." It's about how yeah, she just wicked, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, I'm not. Sure. I, didn't, I didn't see it, but I just wanted to make kind of find out what that what that whole thing was about. So um, basically, it's it's like um, it's like 
uh, clueless, but with Wizard of Oz, it's like El- Elphaba, like Glinda, is like the popular, <laughs> like, ah, mm. popular! And yeah. um, the Wicked Witch of the West, or East, West? West. Yeah. Yeah, West, is like in a wheelchair and not popular because of she, because oh. she's in a wheelchair. I, I don't know why that's okay, but f- whatever. She's not popular because she's in a wheelchair. And she's green, so I don't know. That, okay. that would make I, me popular. Yeah. Well, maybe not just during a pandemic. Probably... Yeah, for myself, I want to kind of clarify because a lot of this is like, like I don't, it don't add up who's who. I, I understand who Glenda is. I understand but that. But I don't God understand who's who. Yeah. Glenda. Glenda. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll make one, Jamie. So you're saying your man is now trying to con her, not con her, whatever. Well, because like at this point, he basically goes and says, close your eyes, darling. Close your eyes. Ah, okay. And, uh, think about this and this and this and I'm just preparing my potions and he's looking in her basket and sees a picture of Auntie M and he's like, okay, she's clearly running away. I, I sense you're you're far from home. And, uh, I, you know, he starts looking into his crystal ball and I love it. It's like, th- there's a woman and she's standing by a porch and, oh, she's clutching her heart. And it's like, oh my God, she's having a heart attack. Someone call the police. Um... So I love Judy Garland's reactions in this. I just think it's so pure and so like that old Hollywood style of acting as well, of just like big doe-eyed sort of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's just I don't know. There's something about her expressions in this scene. This. The what? I did not kill my aunt. <laughs> That's <What>? not fair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I did stopped you, it on that. I, did you I lose, perfect. Darren? No, Darren is still there. Oh, sorry. No, no, he's still there. He's gobsmacked. (laughs) He's like, wow, I've never seen Judy in such a light before. (laughs) Sorry, I can't see you on my screen, that's all. No, sorry, no, I'm here. I'm here. I'm watching. I just, um, like, yeah, she got those those big eyes. She got those big anime eyes. Yes. Yeah, she got lovely eyes. Actually, sorry, those big Adderall eyes, really. Realistically. (laughs) It's just just pupil. Oh, my God. All the pupil. Let's go there. Um... Uh, but yeah, but even her reaction, like, but like, is spot on to like the fact that she is able to cry on cue. There was never, there was never needed. That was one good thing about Judy Garland when she was, when she was cast. A small reason, because she was able to cry on cue. That's because um, the director is behind the camera with a chain. Come on, well, Judy, you can cry yeah, for the I, director, I, can't you? Yeah, but I have something, I have something to say about her acting later on when she gets to meet the lioness. I'll go through that when we get there. But um, there's loads more talk. You want to be an actor, don't you, Judy? I bet that... Hey, there you go. I bet that started like that. You want to be famous, don't you, Judy? You want to be famous, uh, Ken? You want to be famous? Ha! 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 Yeah, they, all, the, all the execs went around like this. Ha! Ha! Cha-cha-cha! Well, I can't um, think... I think about Minnie Mouse or Mickey Mouse unless I ever think about Family Guy so he's like, uh, <laughs> where he's drawing Minnie Mouse. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Like, you want to be famous, don't you? <laughs> you want to be Take famous, don't you? Oh. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Uh, so, uh, so he goes, go back, go back to your aunt. She's dying of a heart attack that you gave her. Uh, yeah. So, uh, oh, there's a window blowing, and then he gives it. Uh, what he calls his horse a name, which I forget as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't. I really don't know. Come on, horsey, giddy up. <laughs> there's a storm a blowing. Um. So, and there is a storm a blowing. Um, yes. A fucking awesome looking hurricane. Fucking if I do twister. say so myself. Do you know, a tw- there's a twister. Um, yeah. Do you know how they did this? Uh, vaguely, it was uh, like tights or stocking. Yes. yes. Right. And, and it's it stuck down. And all they do is like yeah. blow a, a kind of a suction thing. And, a, and a, the way it twists and everything and when i seen this i was like wow and then i actually saw in real life on the discovery channel on the way a twister that looked exactly like that you know with oh. the whoa the whirling thing. Really saw it, did it. <laughs> no that's why i said in real life on the discovery channel <laughs> um it was in real life but i wasn't there um or that film you know with the big twister in it Twister, the movie called Twister. No, 2012, <laughs> when the world ended. That one. Twister. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> oh, you know what? You oh, 
this is probably too late for that film but i'd love to go around and rent that video um and then just replace it with like a, an hour and a half of just you playing the game twister fuck's sake left left leg green and it's like the fact that you this... use the words rent and video in the same sentence love it. Love it. That's when you go down to the local video shop yeah the extra vision yeah, right down the road to extra, extra vision I'll have uh, local, 20 woodbines. Local, oh, for the yeah. Americans, that's um, that's blockbuster. Uh, blockbuster. They wouldn't give me they wouldn't give me a rental because I owed money on my on my card. You showed them. <laughs> you showed them, buddy. You lasted them out. <laughs> I, I ain't paying anybody any money. I love I love if you went over to one of the you know the the um the kiosks that they have and you go to try yeah. and rent a movie and it's like we remember. <laughs> they just won't let you. Damn! So, uh, so yeah. The twister effect is fucking awesome in this. I really like it. But that just tells you, like, ingenuity. They had massive wind machines blowing, right? Blowing, like, as she was walking. And they had to, like... Because the dog couldn't, with the force that was blown, you could see it when you're watching the movie, Judy Garner, the dog actually uh... couldn't go... So you see her throw, like, the dog was not nearly on two legs getting blown back. So she actually threw her basket and grabbed the dog up. She had to bring the dog with her because he wasn't able to walk and they were blown, like... Like... This was probably at a time when they were like, ah, just put some weights on the dog. Just keep weighing the dog down. (laughs) He's not moving anymore, boss. Okay, take one weight off. (laughs) Um, so yeah, we get to see all the chickens and then they have like full horses on a set. Yeah. Like remember, this is inside and there's like bolting horses fucking just flying out of this barn. Uh, health and safety gone mad. I mean the opposite way. Not, not at all. Um, mad so, gone health and safety. Mad. <laughs> and so we get Aunt, Aunt, Auntie M going, Dorothy! Dorothy! And I've always thought that the way she sounded here was really strange. Why does she sing? Why does she, she doesn't shout for her? She sings no. it. Dorothy! Dorothy! Dorothy. This is she my sing. hurricane voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh my god, is that is that at Auntie M's hurricane voice or twister? What's the difference between a twister and a hurricane? A twister twists and a hurricane is just wind. There you ah, go. sounds like no difference between a politician to me. <laughs> no. Hi oh. So they all go down into the uh the bunker and they don't give a shit about Dorothy. They're like, look, she it's fucking made her fun. choices. She yeah, made her says, choices. We can't look for her now. Like we're not gonna be able to look for her in this twister. Let's just get in, like let's just leave her out here no matter where she is. Come on, the orgy's happening. Come on, Anne. Yeah. Annie M. <laughs> I'll be the tin man. Um, so she gets... What have I told you about watching the Pornhub versions of these movies? I'm sorry. Imagine, and it just... Che- all the screenshots just turn to, like, bounce. she go, wow, wow. The Wizard of Cock. The Wizard of Cocks. Is... And then it's a Z at the end. Because it's made in the early 2000s. And it's, like... It, and, and everybody has bleached hair tips. You know, one of those. Moving on. Moving on. So this is the uh, twister effect I was talking about with the sock. With the... And yeah, this is where you're talking about um, when they basically have wind machines and things are genuinely blowing at her. Like, I think there's like fences flowing past. And it's like, she's going to get knocked out. Um, She does. She gets hit by Brandt. Like, because the lads... This is how strong the wind machines were. The lads were throwing debris into the air and it blew it at her. (laughs) Like, well, they were, like, they're just throwing cigarette butts, like standing at the side it. of it, just coffee they cups. They weren't throwing like, ah! you know, like they weren't throwing like bits of paper. They were throwing like full branches in the air. <laughs> just so, running out of the set, getting a branch, just throw at it. Like, well, like one fella, she had to like do this four or five times. Like, this she had an awful time in this fucking set. One fella threw like a bucket, like you know, a metal, <laughs> a metal <laughs> and it it like hit her so hard. Throwing the, the leg, horses. And, uh, yeah, it was fucking, like, brutal, boy. Fucking brutal. I just a, a full camera, a director's chair. Like, oh, that's a bit odd. Yeah. See what happens. Dodge this. If you can dodge a wrench, <laughs> good luck. 
if <laughs> so uh she gets blown blown back into the house effectively oh i better get next to this huge window um right next to yeah. my in the bedroom and not close it i'll be fine oh i'm i'm knocked out sorry <laughs> And she didn't get hit. She got hit with this. These are obviously wires. The windows are on wires. They are pulled up, but she got fucking boxed in the back of the head with it. Like, but um, now okay, I don't know. We got to make this look it, real. I don't, I don't know if there's any injuries up, but she did get slapped in the back of the head with it. Like, oh, yeah, said yeah, I had, yeah. The doctor said it had to make. It had to make contact with her. I'm like, holy shit! Like, Jesus. Couldn't we just use styrofoam? Nah, it hasn't been invented yet. Okay. <laughs> so. She, uh, this is the part where you see all the things flying past the window. Um, this is where, this is the very blurry line where is it real or is it she just knocked out? Or so did she I think get rid This part, if you're watching the picture, you know when she starts to phase in and out, when it starts yeah. to do double, double vision. Woo, woo, woo. That's, yeah. so I think in the book it's more heavily implied that it was real. Whereas in this, it's more heavily implied that it was a dream. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I believe. I would have um, thought it was a dream. That would have been my... I, I think the ending, the ending of this seems to put more emphasis on, oh, maybe it was real, but I think going into it, you just assume it's a dream. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, no, I just never would have thought that. And, it's, and then obviously when I watched the return to Oz and she's in a mental institution and she's escaping, I'm like, oh, like, is it... Is That's something... because she won't stop talking. She's like, and the line, it's like, Dorothy, that happened what, a year ago. It's like, mm-hmm. you need to stop talking about this thing. But now you look like four years younger than you did back a- then. Auntie like... M is such a bitch. Like, she's like, okay, I just, I'm just sick of her now. I'm like taking her to an insane asylum. They'll, they'll bring her. And then like Jack Nicholson sitting there going, hey, chief. Um, <laughs> what a great movie. We should have done the outro to that movie. Yeah. Uh, so... We get um, a chicken coop that's fully intact for some reason. Yeah. Perfectly fine. I don't, uh, I don't know. A giant old woman in a massive chair. They got the ratio off on that one. Um, and then two men did in a they? boat. Or did they, Jamie? Or did they? Maybe She's the house got really size. small. <gasps> oh, my God. It was all a dream. Really a small. Dream. Really small Alice in Wonderland dream. Did. It was like a nap. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. This and then two men in a boat, and then we get. This, this, I don't get. They're not even the lads. I thought they were like supposed to be the lads. Maybe they're like no. the two. But they're not. They're just random fucking guys who are in a boat. Like, no. yeah, I was like, what's happening right now? Like, <laughs> what decision was that to make? Like, who what the fuck are these? Guys? And then they right now. The it's like yeah. It's like I, I I believe the chickens. Okay, I believe the giant old woman in the rocking chair is still sewing. Two lads in a boat. Nah. <laughs> Lost yeah. it. Had to turn it off. There's a movie I watched years ago called Freaked. You ever see Freaked? No. I've never seen it, but your man from um, Wayne, or uh, Te- uh, Bill and Ted is in it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like, they, they're trying to escape this, like, they're trying to escape this, like, monster or farm thing. And they're all dressed as milkmen. And there's, like, 12 milkmen. And your man looks back and says, what the fuck are you doing? He says, 11 milkmen, I believe. 12 milkmen. Get the hell out of here! <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, yeah, it's like it's like a, what Randy Quaid is in, isn't he? Yeah, it's. You know, I have to say, it's the most. You know, one of those movies that you you know you seen years ago, but you're like, was it real? Did they really see that movie? Yeah. It's <laughs> actually fucking brilliant. I have to say, it's like Doctor Moreau, where he tries to start turning people into freaks, basically. Yeah, isn't it? Goes, Randy Quaid is like the fucking real weird doctor. Your man goes, they go yeah, yeah. to watch this, they go to watch the show, the freak show, and all of a sudden they get like drugged and they get dragged in, they get turned into freaks. <laughs> so, it's, your man is like turned into a big worm and he keeps saying, no matter what, like through the whole movie, your man keeps saying, scratch my ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to watch that next. Says, you really want do you really want me to scratch your ass? And he says, I'd sell my own soul to scratch my own ass. <laughs> It's fucking brilliant. It's I have, like, I like you have that. to take a look at it. Brilliant. I like I like a little bit of Randy Quaid. He's a bit. This close. is what you get with this podcast. You get other movies entwined with the Wizard of Oz. Let's do this shit. Who who do, yeah? Who even knew that Freaked could be interwoven with uh, Wizard of Oz? So, 
we get a cool little um a cool little transition over from uh your one being on the bike to the one being on uh the broomstick again that's i like sweet. these kind of like little film effects special well, back, effects back then man that's fucking that's like, clearly you can see it like you know how it transitioned but it's really like for back then it was fucking really good effects very good very good it's i, I really like how it's done um we then get a, an outside shot of the house in the twister and yeah. now the twister for some reason has brought us to a completely different place and i love the way that the whole entire house drops and goes and then everything yeah. just stops silent uh great now this is the scene that's really cool there's two people here so all of the back of the door and your one are dressed in sepia and um that she opens the door and then it's actually so then you kind of zoom past dorothy and then see everything and then this is a second dorothy this is actually judy garland it's cool how they did that so again to, to make the effect of it being like a split yeah yeah uh, I think this was when they were just starting to introduce color a lot of the time into film. Yeah, Technicolor, yeah. Mm. Uh, this is like, everything looks amazing this is better, in it. But this is better than any color. Like You can see on the beams of the house, it's that whatever color you're talking about. I'm just going to say orange or brown. It's It looks like that kind of like still color. So it looks like they separate the two timelines, like, you know, or the two worlds, whatever, two places. Yeah. Like, But you look at the colors... They're so... I think this movie was a great... Like, what, you know, the new Alice in Wonderland was trying to do with the colours and the kind of, like, outlandish, like, fucking... But this movie did it perfectly. It's so hard to get that digitally correct, whereas if you do that in person and paint everything like that, it's much easier to see whether it's going to work on film or not. Like, this movie, like, Jamie, you look at... um, I think CGI... Because Alice in Wonderland... Tim Burton's right. We all know Tim Burton's. I think he's a genius. I think he's great. But the problem is CGI, in my opinion, fucking ruins movies because movies are not movies anymore. It's like you look at again the uh, Avengers, all super, like they're great. For, like it's great for certain aspects. But when you make a whole movie, as in Alice in Wonderland with the green skin, and I when it annoys me, people turn around and say, "Oh, but it was amazing." You couldn't barely know. No, you fucking know it's a green oh, screen. You know. Oh. But like it, even at, at the time when it comes out, it might be good. Like for that one year yeah. until technology moves on again, and already it's aged. Whereas with practical effects and with actual painting, you can't age that. This is but this is why when JJ, JJ Abrams went back and did more practical effects in the Force Awakens. That's why I was so excited because when he did when he did the Force Awakens, and his main thing because his he was an original Star Wars fan. He's a massive Star Wars fan. He was like, we need more practical effects because obviously he had been to the prequels and seen the CGI. And he did a lot of practical effects, which that's why, regardless whether the movie is an amazing movie, I loved it because it was a lot of practical effects and it brought me back to when I watched The New Hope. And it brought me back to movies like this when there is a lot of practical effects and there's a lot of... Well, this movie is pretty much all practical effects. Um, well, it is. Like, it's 100%. They had no computers. <laughs> like, no, it would have been impossible. There's, there's, um, like the Special scene where it's actually going in, there's double negatives and stuff like that. So there is splicing and editing of the actual yeah. 35 mil film, but there's no actual, obviously there's no CGI. <laughs> so, there's no, like, does that make, yeah. so I have a question. Does that make people's, people not as talented nowadays then? If, cause yes. if you look at people like this way, right, if you, but look, okay, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not trying to diss anybody. I'm like, they're fucking well, weird. They're, they're well, jobs. It's a different but, skill set. Yeah. But if you look at it like this way right, back then, and this was obviously people at the highest level of their skill set, what they were doing, right? And if you people try to do this now, if you said to like production designers and like set designers and set painters and all this, like if you said to them, right, you can't use special effects, you can't yeah. use this and that, would it be as good? It depends on their background. Because I mean, if they came from uh, like, a background or something like that, they would have their background. They would have the, yeah. the ability to do practical so, effects. And if there's someone like the Henson company, obviously they're going to be yeah. all puppeteers and robotics and animatronics and stuff. So obviously that's fine. But you're not going to ask someone who has studied and built a career in like CGI and computer graphics to suddenly turn around and do 
practical effects. It's a different skill set. So the, the reason probably this is, yeah. So the reason probably this is so good is because there was like super question because there wasn't CGI back then because this is what they were working with. Obviously, this is what people. Well, you look at then again, you can look at the opposite in the spectrum and you look at things like Avatar. Like it for what it is, it's fucking outstanding. It's amazing. It's you know movie changing whatever it was. Like, but you look at things like Titanic with a lot of practical effects. No, but I'm, no, but I'm saying Avatar for its time and when it came out, there was nothing like that. You know what I mean? Same as this one. My, my problem is people get lazy. People, p- directors get lazy. Yeah. CGI people get lazy. Everything like you're asking someone that deals in CGI to not only be an architect but to be um, a biologist, to be um, a physicist. Like they need to know the weights of things. Like I've seen yeah. Transformers films where the things look like they're made of paper because they don't look realistic enough to be in the real world. Um, well, you, you know, look, buildings you and things like that don't exist like that in CGI. Yeah. They can do anything. Well, if you look at Transformers, right? you look at Transformers, sorry to go off the whole Wizard of Oz subject, but you look at Transformers, you look at um, fuck Marvel again, like whatever movies, like the new, the new Avengers, because that was the, the pinnacle of like the Marvel. What's real in the movie? Like out, out of all the movies, I, I know the actors are real, but like you look at it like, are I watched Tom Von, Lawler, Tom Von Lawler playing... But like, there's nothing practically, there's nothing real in it. Like, there's a few sets, but only sets are half built. Like, you look at, when I see an episode behind, it was behind the scenes of the Avengers. And, like, as we've said this before, like, Robert Downey Jr. was going around wearing a fucking tracksuit. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, with, with a ball here, ball here, ball here. Like, to me, knowing this ruins the movie. And when I look at every single character in this Wizard of Oz was wearing a handmade costume, was perfectly painted up, was regardless whether they were a, a munchkin or were like Julie Garland's. Julie Garland had was it sixty eight pairs of ruby shoes, but they're all hand placed gems for that. Mm-hmm. Every costume was like a fucking costume. It was when to me this is all Hollywood, and this is when people work their fucking ass off. Like you said, Jamie, people. I think, and it's very, it's very I, easy for me to sit here on a podcast and say, oh, they get lazy. Yeah, I do think it's not fair to say that people don't work their asses off for movies now because, oh. like I said, it's just a different skill set. You still have to train as much and put in as much work. It's just a different skill set. Yeah. But, but, is but it is, it, it, but it's the, it, it creates an atmosphere of um, streamlined um, creativity production. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, he, he, oh, we don't need a set producer. We don't need costume design, yeah. really. We don't need props we don't need all of this look we streamlined it oh it's just all this one company does it all for us now it's like yeah but you've just basically ruined you've ruined the flair you've ruined the you've ruined the things. longevity of your movie you've ruined if jobs you've basically removed people's jobs as well like a like a yeah, crew of people is now just like a handful probably but um but yeah let's you, let's uh move the last thing i'll say is yeah. One of the last one of the last remaining jobs that I've seen and one of the like that they don't do it anymore is animation. Daryl Grootman is like there's like you look the last animated movie I saw properly animated Disney was a uh, Princess and the Frog. And that and got really was, bad reviews. Nobody went to fucking see the thing. It was I, do you know what I watched it again recently. It's it's just not a great movie. It's not a great script. Um, oh, yeah, but yeah. but this but that's you know what the problem is? You know what they focused on? Um, oh look it's a black princess it's like yeah, yeah you know what you should have done do that do that all day long but don't make that your main fucking reason for making yeah. the movie never had don't do that they, they, don't no, do it no matter what was going to happen with that movie it was going to be like that because there had never been a black no. princess was, dude, dude, so, you know what, what, what they're doing know. now with soul i i've only seen some of the um the i haven't even seen an ad for it. i don't even know what it's about i know it's about jazz um, or or soul music or something like that. I'm just yeah. I've only seen literally one picture of it, and I think it's about like a ghost and a jazz player, maybe. Oh, it's about sorry. <laughs> ah! Infection. Yeah. Find your mute button. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Fox um, passed away, and he's not his time yet. He finally gets his shot. He's a he's a teacher. He's a music teacher, but he wants to become a jazz. Okay player and then um, he basically goes up into he's on his way he falls down a, like a fucking a shower basically or a what's called a manhole a and manhole. he goes up yeah he's a manhole yeah i'm oh, sorry he's a not, people hole darren people he's, hole he's up to heaven and he basically doesn't want to fucking go to where he's going so 
he finds his way back to Earth, but on the way down, he basically has to bring a soul down him. He like giving people the spark, but him and his spark, the spark lands in his old body, and his his part lands in the person's cat. So he's the cat. It's a fucking. It's an. It's an okay movie, but it's not well, great. Well, it's it's, what what I'm trying to say is that I I don't know anything about it, but I hope yeah. they don't do the same thing as they did with the Frog Princess. You know this like. Uh, just focus on the story and that's again that's what they did in this you know all of these little people um when they do the dance and everything um that would have been just one person like they did in um uh what's it charlie and the chocolate or fucking willy wonka and the chocolate oh no charlie and chocolate factory ridiculous glinda this is a special effect actually this when glinda comes in with in in the bubble um i don't know how they they did that i guess it's some sort of magic it's probably she's a double not, negative as well. Yeah. Like she's it's a positive? Like, no, like they filmed, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they filmed a bubble. Okay. And then filmed that and then put the two negatives together. Ah, I like it. I do like There's it. a lot of that. That's, mm-hmm. that's probably the highest, the most level of effects that are involved in this movie. Or maybe she was actually in a bubble. She was in Just a bubble. It's going to say just put it out there, guys. Conspiracy confirmed. Glinda was in a bubble all along. So Glinda comes down and she's like, Hey, see those shoes? Take them. Take those yeah. shoes. And, and Dorothy's like, well, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, who owns them? And she's like, I don't. Shut up! I'm just, I'm a woman that appeared in a bubble. Take, t- take the yeah. shoes. Trust me. Trust me. I have a wand. Uh, so... We get the cool sh- like um, the, the cool shot, and I th- I've always again when you're younger, maybe it's more you're more impressionable. But you know, an image, the slanted house on top of the person, like the fact that a person could probably make a house like arch up like that is impossible because they would just be smushed. But again, it's a fantastical world, and I, I again that image is a kind of a big um, nostalgia. Um, I don't know. What do you call it? Horcrux. Mystic. <laughs> the word it's Horcrux in my mind. Uh, so we get introduction to the lovely ruby slippers that were meant to be silver, and they did shots with silver ones. Uh, in the fi- in the book, they were actually silver. Uh, and isn't it weird? Because then, you, like the the glass slippers were like a pair of fur slippers. Yeah. 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 Why did they change it? Is there a reason for them changing? It's just look better. Oh, yeah. okay. So they want them to be okay. They were like, okay, fuck the book. I love the way at the very start they were like, oh, we just want to honor the memory of the book. And I love the, that, like, not even 20 minutes in, fuck the book. The <laughs> ruby slippers. Uh, so we get um, the, a shot of the became, ruby slippers. Because they became like an iconic part of like the culture. Yeah. They were like ruby slippers, even though they weren't supposed to be fucking ruby slippers. Jesus. I know. Like just like Disney, they changed like the, into the glass slippers, right? They did that with all all of those kind of films, um, changing stuff. I don't like uh, bastards. So everybody, oh no, wait, this is what? What's the um? The is this? It is. This is yeah. Yeah. Maybe that doesn't sound because I'm a little bit tone deaf as well. So maybe to everybody else listening to this, it just sounds. Which song is it? You got it. You got it. Rabbit. I think I'm a little bit higher. So they're all delighted that she committed homicide and theft of a dead body. Congratulations, you murdered oh, she was her. She was the wicked bitch. She was a bitch. bitch. She, sorry, did, did I say wicked or a bitch? Sorry. Wait, she's a bitch of the West. So everybody has a lovely sing and a dance. And oh. Dorothy's like, okay, this makes me feel better about murder. I'm, I'm okay. Everybody, <laughs> she went along. They got horses. They got little ponies out. They got a carriage. Not, they got me, not, men with funny about, little mustaches. Well, like... This is the part that I remembered when I was a child. This this whole sequence. 
Like every character here that came out on Sanctuary, you know the what do you call it? The lali, the lullaby league. We we'll uh, get. The, I have I have a picture for each of those, by the way. Okay, good, 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 good. So we have. Uh, oh, there's the mayor. He's amazing. It's a mix of really young people and really old yeah. midgets, yeah. Uh, and it's really off-putting sometimes because some <laughs> of the really old women are dressed up as w girls, and some of the girls are dressed up like fully grown women, and I'm like, yeah. ah, my brain! What's, that? What's that For me, it was like the inconsistency across their faces. Yes. Like you could tell, obviously, the little people have their a different yeah, yeah. form, I think face, and then there's children. They thought to get away with the costumes. I think they just thought like, okay, we'll just put big boy costumes and no one will know. <laughs> maybe with the quality of screen then, you mightn't have been able to see that difference, maybe. It's like, they, um, they, remember in The Simpsons. would be so enamored with the colours that they would just fucking not know what's happening else. So it would have been impossible to get that many little people, though. Yeah, yeah. In the group I'm on about, in the group that I was saying to you, there's, I think there's only 30. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, even 30. that is astounding to me that you would have yeah. a troop of that many little people. They were a troop, yeah. A troop. That's the so, one. Is it? Of little people? Is oh, that like a oh, murder of crows? A group of performers is called a troop. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's the name for a group of little people. Like a, a murder troop. of crows, a troop of little yeah. people. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh my god, there was a troop of midgets in town Bad today. Which Bad 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 um it, it reminded me of um remember in The Simpsons where Bart goes like Millhouse gets really famous and he goes over to touch Oh Millhouse and he touches him by the shoulder and is that really old guy? <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, what do you want? <laughs> He's like, ah Uh so yeah, it seems like that seems like everybody in this film. Uh, and then they're like, hey, we were so efficient. There's no bureaucracy. It's uh, it's perfect utopia. We drew, we drew up a certificate of death just now. Literally <laughs> signed it and everything. Um, he's me, like, I love this guy. He goes, he's the most Irish guy you can he murder. I murder discreetly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but yeah, like there's like, even though they're all little people, it's like I don't even know who's little and who's not little anymore. I think there's so I just said some of <laughs> who's little. This blew my mind. You know, uh, actually, they got real full size people, but then put them in pits. So like, there's like full size people mixed in trenches with young kids and old midgets, and you're like, okay, yeah. who's who's actually the same size here? I'm so confused. Am I the tall one like now? Yeah, all I could t all I could think about during this whole sequence is when like they were I was told that they used to come on they used to like, stay on the set all night drinking like parties like the the the, the dwarves the lollipop guild they, they get angry they just, they used to, just, like when they start rolling they'd be all hungover and pissed off and sick of in the corner like and like they uh -huh. all be like arguing and giving it to you a feel or stuff like me yeah. seven Terry was saying this. they were just like like let's be honest they were just asking they were getting very like, little handsy. <laughs> a little handsy. A little handsy. <laughs> a poor girl. Like it's no wonder she was so fucked up. Like all of these people are well dead. I think we can make fun. It's like making fun of Genghis Khan. Like what is he gonna do? Well, he does have all those descendants. Hmm. Sorry, Genghis Khan. Or Genghis. Is it Jenga? Jenga Khan. So where are we in the movie? <laughs> where are we in the movie? We're in the certificate of death part. <laughs> Uh, they murdered her most discreetly, um, uh, and then they, they made sure that she was com dead completely. <laughs> it's like God; these people have no problem with murder, and then coming up with really good songs afterwards about how they murder people. Um, so we got the um, what's the 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 woman? The women first. What are they? The lullaby. The lullaby. Lullaby league. The lullaby league. Yeah. L lullaby League, right? Lullaby League, yeah. We Lullaby League, the Lullaby League. I think they all have like a like a stutter or a stammer because they all do this like thing at the end of a sentence. <laughs> these guys are the best, and these guys confuse me because again, it's like, how old are these people? Are these old men or are these young children? These, these are my homies, these guys. These are just, like, the best guys. Like, these guys over here, see the guy in the blue shirt? He reminds me of my nephew, Aaron. And, like, for you always did. <laughs> like, 
I swear to God, the, forever, like since my, like this is one of my earliest memories watching this movie. My dad used to be like the, the lolly, we represent just before their sec, just before their scene come on you can see these guys over the side stage smoking a cigar and drinking some rum or something or fucking whiskey <laughs> hey, okay, I, got, I gotta be on Charlie in the Chocolate Factory in 20 yeah. minutes yeah but like I'm one of the lovers I don't know why this stuck in my mind like since like for, I first watched it but like, they were just fucking brilliant it, they the have such weird guys, faces, though. I think yeah. it's just because, like, they look so weird. And there's, like, their hair yeah, starts, yeah. like, back here. It's like Popeye. It's weird. Um, it's the fucking, there so are the, wigs, those, obviously. Like, but you can see when, are, they're, when they're talking about it. You can see where the wig starts, like. You see it's like a head mask thing. Imagine being stuck in that. I want one of those shirts, though. And, that, and a pair of those pants. <laughs> I could definitely I see like, that first one, the checkered. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Halloween, we're dressed up. The, we're dressed up as the lollipop guild. Yes. Uh, so we, she's we Jordan into just the, the other guy. We three of us. Dorothy is delighted. She's like, lads, thanks for the lollipops. Thanks for the the flowers. You're all creepy looking. I don't know how old you are, but stop touching me. Stop touching me, <laughs> Mayor. Up. Will you stop touching me? No, that that's not me. It's the coroner. Uh, oh yeah, like you can see a perfect uh, huddling of creepy old men. Again, I don't know how old these people are. Are they? Is that okay? Like, is this their you know twelve year olds, like thirty year olds? It's it's not okay. It's not okay, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter if you're a little person, if you're a troop of little people, or a murder of crows. So it's all put to an end. That. Evil Witch of the we- East. West. Which one is the ba- West. West? East is dead. Sorry, yes. East is dead. West. Yes. West is best. West. No. So East is dead. West is yeah. <laughs> Wicked Witch of the West. So she comes along, and the way that she comes out of the floor, you know, and the big puff of smoke and everything with the fire. Uh, I love it. Love all. I love all the practical effects. I think that this is where she gets horribly burned, though. Yeah, no, when she's when she's leaving the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, did they actually do that there? Because I was going to bring that mm-hmm. up. I think no, I asked you that. Like... No, she did, she did get Harvey Byrne, but this was like the one they show in the movie. It was the, for all the world, the tech run, the practice run. The one okay. they they I wasn't camera. sure if they actually used that like smoke and fire effect with the witch or whether it was um, a use of the negative from the Emerald City. Because... The same smoke and fire effect is in the Wizard of Oz's big platform thing. So I thought they might have just spliced that over to the the witch. No, no, because that repeatedly happens with the witch, that kind of smoke effect. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, We we get to see that. Oh, no, the shoes are gone. And the witch's feet are all crawling in, which is really, really creepy. Um, Damn it. I wanted those slippers, says the witch. No, nope, they're mine, says Glinda and Dorothy after thieving them. Um, I think they magic her, like, I think they magic the ruby slippers on her. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. Uh, so, apparently, Glinda has put some sort of a spell on them, meaning that the Wicked Witch is not able to take them off, uh, which is really convenient. Uh, because I think... But even the effect they used when she went to take them off her and they like shocked her. Ah! I think that's later on. I think that's with the like the little yellow buzz thing on it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, shit. Sorry, that's the end. Sorry. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah go. Yeah. But it's the same idea, basically. Yeah, exactly. So then after a little bit of um, explaining going, hey, I'm going to go off in a bubble, but you walk all the way there, okay? I'll, uh, this bubble like only fits one. Again. They could have just flown yeah. to Mordor, but they didn't. No, they didn't use the big birds that they had. They just had to walk all the way there. Well, that's as far as I can go. Uh, so we then get the first rendition of "We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz." Oh, he, Darren's off to see the pisser. <laughs> Lovely. Um, and again, a wonderfully um, 
a, a painted fucking matte scene on this. I love the sky. I love the fields. It's amazing. Yeah, it's very um, much a dream world, isn't it? It's very... It is. And I think, you know, when you see films, again, in, um, you know, 4K, or you see them in, like, a- amazing high definition or whatever, this is a film that actually looks better. Um, I think so. And I think it adds to the fact that it's a dream world. You know, yeah. I only imagine that, like, back in the day on your CRTV or even worse, um, you know, your tube TV or whatever, and you, this probably looked like it was meant to look like the background of a place or it, meant, it was meant to look like an actual distant land. Yeah, but nowadays, like, it, I don't like remember Truman Show, so vivid. like in the Truman Show where it's all clouds and then it just turns, it gonna crashes through the wall. Yeah. Um, this is really vivid and sort of in your face color and you know, that's, a complete is, contrast to back in Kansas. And I think that's like, imagine just, again, being used to seeing films in 3D and probably not having any idea about the color in this and then just being mesmerized throughout the whole entire thing. And now you're seeing these amazing huge scenes and everything is painted. Like, I bet that would be a gripping moment for anybody watching the film for the first time. Yeah, Um, definitely. So we then get the first encounter with a lovely... Mr. Scarecrow and he's hung up on a stick and she's like which way to go and he's like I'd go that way ah uh, this way yeah this way this way Just everything a little bit he of says jazz go- up on stick. everything he says it sounds like hell why don't you go over there <laughs> oh my goodness so they introduce each other and he's like please take me down because I've been stuck up here for ages. And I can't remember what his original... In the book, I, I have a faint memory of the farmer putting him up there and putting a brain in him. Um, and then basically just going, eh, I don't really give a shit about him anymore. And just sticking him up on a, on a stick because he asked too many questions, effectively. So, <laughs> pretty sad. Um, uh Oh, no, they didn't put a brain in him. Did, what did they do with him? I can't remember. Anybody that's watching at the minute can comment because I've, I've completely flatlined. I know lots about the Tin Man, though, because that's the funniest one. <laughs> um, so after the dance, which probably one of my favorite songs. I, I prefer Tin Man's dance a little bit more, though. Yeah. I, I'm not surprised that this guy had an injury when he was doing all those dances. Because the way he, like, bows his leg and everything, it's like, shit. Um, You're just asking for it. What's that? He put his knee, he put his knee up. Sorry, I'm eating Pringles and mom's side. I'm just um, Pringles? Share one with the audience and me. He, um, he put his knee up, please. But, like, you look at, like, you look at his fucking knees, the way they're all bent and the way they, with the stuff he does. But um, like I just read, I read about him. But he did the whole song. He was talking to like I don't know if it was a magazine or and there was an interview done with him. And it's like someone saying that he was actually did the whole song and dance. He did the whole routine with this a dislocated knee, and then he popped back in the place himself when he went offside set. And then um, because the doctor there was a doctor there, like he obviously couldn't walk his day properly. Popped the back in the place there, and I was like. Holy shit. Imagine. No, the only equivalent you have that these days is Tom, fucking Tom Cruise breaking his leg and just continuing fucking filming. But like, or Leonardo not, DiCaprio. We had this discussion about we all did. the This is like a Deja Vu. Modern movie. Ah, stop. Stop the line. Like, we all have like a little bit of... Modern actor is so much, it's kind of ridiculous. Stop it now. Just stop the noise. What, we rag on them? Um, yeah. No. Yeah, fuck them. I don't give a shit. They're millionaires, and I can say whatever I like about them, bastards. That's what I'm. Re- I'm really jealous. Okay, I'm just that's the only reason I'm on in th- this podcast, just to feel better about myself and to entertain, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we get the uh, the scarecrow going. One of my favorite lines in all of movie history, and I think obviously it's taken from the book, but uh, she goes. 
yeah, like, how can you talk if you don't have a brain? And then he turns around and he goes, well, a lot of people do a lot of talking and they don't have uh, brains. Or, or like, uh, people with, with no brains at all do an awful lot of talking. Um, and I like that. I like it's that. It's very true. It, I think this is where the, the introduction in the book starts getting a little bit political. So I'm, I'm going to just get this out of the way. Jamie's political corner. Come join me in the horrible, horrible corner of politics. So at the time, I think, I believe, and maybe this is just something I heard. I can't remember. I don't like checking these things up, by the way, because I find being surprised by someone shouting me down saying, you're wrong, is just too good. Uh, so, but I've heard as a little bit of a backstory that Dorothy's trip towards Emerald City is like her going towards local government or maybe like Washington and picking up people of the land along the way that have problems, um, you know, and then eventually trying to uh, get to the government and then they give you a task to do that's ridiculous and impossible that they don't think you'll be able to do and you come back and go oh, i did it and they're like oh actually it's just a man behind the curtain all along and you know it, it's not actually an all and powerful god it's like no it's just this man a con artist okay so, Michal uh, martin. Michal martin hey he is a con artist i have no problem with saying that <laughs> i thought you were gonna say yeah. he is a curtain he is a curtain Pull yourself together, Miho. <laughs> you like that one? Yeah. Doctor Doctor. So we uh, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. So we get there going, okay, you can join me on my journey towards Oz. And they get a little bit hungry. They stop off for some apples. Seems pretty innocent to me until the trees fight back. Dun, dun, dun. When trees fight back. Three. <laughs> or, or, sorry. Tree. Oh. Oh! A little bit oh. of Irish. A little bit of Irish, Irish jokes there. there. Whoa. So, they start, uh... Well, in fairness, those... So, I don't know whether... In the movie, it's implied that the witch has made a spell on the trees to make them evil because she appears just before they come along with the trees and the apples. Um, oh, but in okay. the book, I believe that they're just like living trees. Um, I believe. I would never have thought of that. I would never even come up with that. I just I knew I seen her like hiding yeah. very very badly in the background, but like I would never have thought that she was. I don't know. But, like if that's one like of the guys. A... One of the guys who had lines in a. Um, he had to be woken up because he kept falling asleep in the tree. Um, I read, yeah, he kept falling asleep. You know the guy who hits her hands? Yeah. Okay. But, like, they kept waiting. They kept shooting, and all of a sudden, he'd be, like, asleep. But well, he was scared. He was hung over the whole time. Like, yeah. a lot of the They're all hung over in this. Yeah. So, um, a lot of it was just fucking drugs and drink back then, buddy. Um, I love that. that I, love, the whole, I love the voice he does. That's Hollywood was. He was just drinking drugs and smoking cigars. Oh, man. Um, I'd love it. Well, like, I, he, was, he was always in like, the tree, smoking a cigar and just uh, glug glug glug. <laughs> taking an apple down. Arr. Um, I love the voice he has. Hey, you! Hey, you! You take my apples! I can't even do it. I get a little. Would bit you of a say that voice. he he barked at her? Well done. Oh no! There's no laughing track. We should get a laughing track. All right, <laughs> badum tss. Badum dum tss. Ha 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 Clap, 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 clap. I like that one. I, no, I like that. I like that. Um, you're branching out, Derry. Oh! Oh! Okay, leave it be. Leave it be. Okay, I'm thinking of other tree jokes. Someone talk about something else quickly. I'm not going to go there. Um, so to go back to comment. <laughs> oh! Comment, comment your best tree jokes below. <laughs> Get, get those tree jokes in, people. We want them. So we uh, we find out the trees don't like their apples being picked. And Scarecrow... So this is where the film starts to get a little bit trippy, if you want to start thinking about it in a trippy sort of way. Where Scarecrow doesn't need a brain. The Tin Man doesn't need a heart. The Lion 
kind of needs courage. He actually is the biggest pussy ever. But he's the only one. But the scarecrow, he is a pussy cat. So the scarecrow, in this instance, comes up with a great idea and says, Hey, let's make them just really angry and they'll throw their apples at us. Uh, Which is fantastic. Those apples, Dorothy. Unless you want little green worms. (laughs) Big worms. And they're like, hey, we don't have any worms in our apples. So it's throwing the apples at him. We're fucking apples. How do you like them apples? How do you like them apples? Are you you just going to chime in with lots of puns and and little sayings, Derek? I I always thought that 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 phrase came from this movie. Until I watched it again and went, oh, I thought they genuinely said in this movie, how do you like them apples? Mandela effect. Is that from Goodwill Hunting? I mean, I know they say it in that, but I thought oh, it was no, like that's an American a... standard phrase that they use, but I thought I it came from this. Apples. I thought that well, was like a really old apple. saying. Yeah, so did I, but I, that's what I mean. I thought it came from from this movie. Obviously I'm pretty sure I listened to a podcast one, one time that explained the, the Apple thing, and now I've completely forgotten oh, about it. But Anyway, the tin Apples! Man, is... Apples! So I'm so glad that he started throwing the, the like the trees started showing those apples because they would have never found uh, the six foot tall tin man literally two feet away from them. They would have went, yeah. oh, there he is. So Dorothy discovers. I love this as well. It's the Judy Garland face of like, it's a foot. <gasps> it's a leg. You don't just see the foot and just go, what? <laughs> what the fuck? She just works her way up and it's like, uh, okay. What is this? And this is where the porn version starts to get spicy. Um, so, I love, again, okay, there's so many bits in this. And again, maybe it's because I watched it as a child, where he goes, Oil can! Oil can! It's like, I think he's saying oil can. Um, but it's just, he's not moving his mouth. And he's like, oil can! Uh, so they start giving him a bit of an oiling. Um, boom. Hey, oh, no. Don't, but you got don't. Grease. No. Boom. Grease, woman. Grease my nuts. My nuts that need yeah, the grease. I just can't. Like, Family Guy have ruined this movie for me. Like, oh my god, look what happened by accident. When he's going side to side, he falls on the scarecrow. Cool. So, um, <laughs> yeah, they love the. Uh, yeah, well, hey, let's ship them. Let's ship them. Isn't that like a. a tin crow. Thing? Tin crow. Um, ew. And, yeah, he loves a little bit of Grease. Yeah, then, but he's, even this song, it. this song is brilliant as well. I love, I, you know what my favourite part in the song is? Where he goes, doot, doot, and the steam <laughs> comes out the top. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> <amazing>. <laughs> <laughs> And the boy who shoots the arrows. Uh, it's like, oh, it's so cute. I like it. But, okay, I'll so I'll tell you. I'll, I'll be tender. Family. I'll be. Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, I'll be caring. I'll be gentle and awful. Sentimental. And oh, and, yeah, this is the part where he's like flirting with Dorothy. Yeah. Oh, do you get that from it? Yeah. <laughs> really? True hey, crow, you're, you're, you're messing my style. Sliding into her DMs, like. Also sentimental. <laughs> but like, you know, I got a vibration set in Dorothy. <laughs> I always feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always like the physical comedy because I always like the scarecrow where he moves and he flips around and all that stuff. But then growing up, I was like, oh, the Tim is actually a really good character. Blah, blah, blah. But now my favorite character in the whole movie is the, the character line. Your man just is just an absolute Fantastic. fucking gem of an actor. He's brilliant. And he actually gets no song when he's introduced, but he gets a song later. So that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, gets a, he, so, doesn't, he doesn't need a fucking song when he gets introduced. He just... Oh, he's uh, brilliant. Ruff, 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 <laughs> that's it. So, in, in, the, uh, in the book, Tin Man... Okay, so Tin Man is a real person. And yeah, yeah. one day, he um, attracts the love of uh this girl in the forest and her mom doesn't want her daughter getting involved with a lonely woodcutter so she goes to a witch and the witch put i think it's the wicked witch of the west actually um yeah, so maybe it might be the yeah. to put a spell on his hatchet 
so that when he swings it, he takes one of his limbs off. So, first off, he just takes off one of his legs, and he chops off his leg, and he's like, oh no! But he goes to his tinsmith, and he gets a new leg built for him. And then he's doing it again, and he just keeps on going until he chops off all of the bits of everything until he's fully made of tin. And the reason he's doing all this wood cutting is because he wants to save up money to buy a house or some shit. Run away with the girl, basically. Um, but now he's fully made of tin and no, has no heart. So all, he, all he's concerned now about, about with is just chopping down trees. And then one day it rained really badly. And uh, yeah, he just got rusted. That's horrifying. Isn't it? That's actually fucking horrifying. He chops Jesus. all of his legs and hands off, but he keeps going. He keeps going. Yeah, so when people talk about Saw and how gruesome those movies, you need to just go so fucking ring. Listen, read The Wizard of Oz. Hey, the backstory to Wizard of Oz, man. Whoa, oh, you know, blow your mind. So, this is the dance part. Oh, oh, oh look what oh. happened. Uh, and then I love the way he stands up and he goes, Oh, no, I'm okay. Oh. <laughs> They're always good. So he's like, Oh, it's okay. Boom. So, you find out that he doesn't have a heart. Scarecrow doesn't have a brain. Tin Man doesn't have a heart. And that's never really delved into at all. He's like, I want to feel things. But he's a fine. He, he feels a lot in this. Like, even later on, when they go to the poppy field, he cries and that rusts him. What is this? Yeah, there's this full. Let's not start po poking. No, no, but it's because you don't need the government. That's all I'm saying. Next, next slide. Uh, you had it in your all self all along. So then the witch comes along and says, "Hey, stop this shit, Joel. I haven't been up in this Can shit." Can we just say how good, how fucking good the costumes are? So I'm just looking at the pictures here. Mm. The costumes are fucking amazing here. Like, I, like I watched it. Obviously, again, I say I watched the Oz Peril and Great, and like, and she was all dressed up in in green, and she had the fake chain, but like. The old costumes are fucking brilliant. Like she looks like a like what you'd expect. Like these movies are what gave people imagination to like if you think what a witch looks like, you think this is exactly what she fucking looks like. You know Well think about it like long, they, they, they got the um the pigment, the, the skin pigment for the green down pretty good. Like it looks like yeah. flesh green. It doesn't look like someone's just been painted a primary <laughs> green colour. And like I'm green. That's but that's why it is in Wicked. In Wicked, she's like, you can see she's painted because everyone fucking knows the musical yeah. to play. But like in this, it looked, like I said, look, all I'm saying, the costumes themselves look fucking amazing. They went above and beyond. Even the Tin Man, the fucking, the thing on his, like the hat he has. And like, they went so far as not to use like a costume. They actually cut out a tin with like a rubber neck so it didn't irritate him. But, like, he I don't know. Was, they it, gave him a pair of like, let's go back for a second. They gave him a pair of, like, rubber wet washing gloves. That was the lazy part. They looked like <laughs> a pair of, like, ma you know, marigolds, but just painted yeah, silver. Because, yeah. like, shit, we don't have any gloves. What about his hands? Uh, uh, quick think. My wife, she got a pair of gloves. But I love I love the fact that this, this scarecrow's nose is just painted brown. Yeah, it's just a <laughs> it's painted just like brown. A the, there's no actually, like, bit put onto it. But, like, I love the fact that he, they, they always had, like, a bale of hay or a thing of hay that he just stuffed in the side of his top there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, this is where she starts setting shit on fire. Uh, she gets, she starts getting serious now. Um, like, I, I don't know. I think this, the flame effects in this are actually done really well as well. Oh, yeah. I'm sure someone got probably really badly second degree burns because of just this. Um, that is real. That 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 is. I, real I was fire, just right? going to say I wouldn't have even call them flame effects. It's just flames. I think well, that's yeah, just fire. I think they just lit things no, on yeah. fire. His hat thing that they use it was a proper metal thing. So what yeah. he put there on top. Now I'd say if he didn't have what he was wearing, he would have got fucking burnt. But I'd say he well, it looks like he put it out himself. I don't know he, now. He, he does. He does put it out with like the top of his hat or whatever. Um, yeah, and it, then up, oh, poof, gone. The, the, she's gone. The witch is gone. Screw yeah. you guys. I'm out of here. Um, now we're into the forest. And this is with the lions and tigers and bears. Oh, oh my. Lions, lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. 
And then this is where the porn version gets really saucy. Uh, did you bring that oil can, Dorothy? Oh my. It's um, oil tell me all about that vibration setting. So we uh, we get a cool set picture of the lion up on the prowl, up on a big stone in the fo- like in the in the kind of mid ground, and the Tin Man, Scarecrow, and Dorothy coming up to the side. Um, I think the costume for the lion is pretty hilarious and comfy looking. I, I think it's amazing. I love the way they did the face. It just looks mm. so good. Well, like his costume is wearing he's wearing a dead lion. He's it's a real lion's like carcass he's wearing, like a full if they just hollowed it out. If you think about it, like, it out. people probably had that as their rug in those days. Mm-hmm. Like you know, there was it's even, a pretty common trope to see uh, like a bear skin rug or a yeah, but even even like the tail they fashioned like as I said they hollered it out they hollered it out and put wires through it like this is everything he's wearing from the ears the ears are actually lion ears like everything he's wearing did they have so, like people it, behind him with like a piece of string or whatever with the tail like swishing it around I love that amazing. But like he just like, but this is when you get like forget the costume and everything. But his acting here is fucking brilliant. He starts bullying everybody. He's just a big bully. You're just a big bully. And then it turns out that yeah, he's just a big bully. Um. And he is he has no reason to be such a bitch. He's the king of the forest. Guy the king of the forest. Right, eh? But um everybody's afraid of him, so he has no friends. Aww. Yeah, but this is the uh, part Julie Garland couldn't stop laughing because a man kept make without meaning to because he's so comedic, he kept making her laugh. Now you see even like when his t- cause his tail obviously going up, what this part I was telling you about where uh, she actually couldn't stop laughing so much that they couldn't keep the scene. The director brought her to side stage and gave her a slap in the face. He slapped her in the face and told her, yeah, stop laughing and get out there and do some work. So she literally went out and um, did the scene. Brilliant. And then um, he felt so bad. He felt so bad after it that he actually told her to, he told all the crew to punch him in the face. Every single crew. But she, but she went up and she put him she up, a put him up. But she gave me a kiss on the cheek and said, "No, no, you did what needs to be done." This is it. I'm like, "You did what needs to be done." You gave me a slap in the face. Imagine that happened nowadays. Women, huh? They knew their their place back then. Jesus. <laughs> no comment. No, do comment. Comment no, lots. Hating. Comment hatred for Jamie. Anything. Let's fuck the algorithm with sex, f- faux sexism. <laughs> Stop trying to. Hey, everybody! Me. I hate insert group here. Just <laughs> hey, add it in later, Derry. Just put 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 out loads of versions of me uh, picking out groups. <laughs> hey, I hate the Lakers. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yes, now we get the witch and her giant ball of crystal, looking and saying. Well, that fire clearly didn't work. Um, I should try something else next time. She doesn't. She doesn't try something else next time. You know what she tries at the end? More fire. And you know what happens to her? Dead. She gets water. I'm just saying, water beats fire. Every time. She, uh, I love, I think she mixes up a potion and then makes the poppies... Um, put them to sleep effectively yeah. and poppies are what you get heroin from opium yeah. That, that's, yeah. yeah that's where you get your opium and your, your lovely opium and heroin lovely heroin look at all that lovely poppy hey have you ever noticed that in Waterford where like sometimes you're walking around there's like poppy flowers everywhere isn't that cool they're not like the Iraq poppies they're not like the US backed uh you know, military grade uh, poppy seeds. Military grade poppy seeds. Military I'm afraid grade. to ask. What? I'm afraid to ask. Yeah, you know, that's what they did. The, in, 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 the, in the war on terror, they went over and they, 
he got all the farmers together and they said, hey, you better rake us your opium, okay? Yeah, hey, I'm John Wayne, see? And I'm, I'm here from oh, America. Okay, sorry. And I'm yeah, coming over to here to grow some yeah, puppies, yeah. cowboy. And that's how it went. That's legitimate history. Is that like the time of opium, gen- opium gens and stuff? No, this is George Bush era. Oh, okay, because that's what I was thinking. George was, Bush yeah. to the return of Bush. Um, so, back to opium. Um, <laughs> back to puppies. So, we get this lovely scene. And again, I think all the trees in the background and everything, all matte painted. Lovely, gorgeous. They stumble upon, oh, there's just, between us and the Emerald City, there's this, just this lovely puppy field. Just, let's travel along in there. Um, the city looks fantastic. The Emerald City, uh, city looks, uh, tremendous. So. Yeah. But that's, that's, then, the pub, that's a decent picture there. Look at that. That's fucking, what's, like, oh, what's yeah, real is? and what's not real there? Like, obviously the whole, like. I think where does the about... matte painting start? Like, where does the wall start? Like, it's probably <laughs> just over that, that one, the first hill there, that over that first ridge there. Mm. But I would, it's I would so different. I would say just where they're standing. I'd say literally they're standing against the wall. I'd say that's, I'd say literally right in front of them is the wall. I actually, you know what, Darren? I think you might be right because yeah. I think Wait. there might be like one hedge in front of them and then there's a wall. Yeah, because I know from that shot, you see them, you see them walking for about three seconds and all of a sudden then yeah. it kind of cuts off there. Like, um, I'd say the wall, look, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, but I think it's, it just, it looks like, obviously, as you know, now a painting, but like, it's fucking beautiful. It's such it's a so good, well done. It's, it's so well done. Um, and if it only it was a painting, Darren, they wouldn't have fallen mm. asleep for all but 10 minutes. Uh, this yeah. is where the, the tin man who has no heart has a cry and rusts yeah. himself up. Because he, he gets scared. The lion makes me laugh because the lion is like, the lion yeah, falls down. He, he he falls at this. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, and then Glinda comes along and she's like, "Snow, bitches! You know what beats heroin? Cocaine! Asbestos! Yeah. Asbestos! Asbestos! Who likes some like mesothelioma? Asbestos. Attack! But like, who's a like fucking hell asbestos? But that wasn't like just that a small. Common. That was like." What the fuck? Yeah. That was common Fake back snow. then. That's what they used. It was like, I think they called it like magic white. Or there was a few different brand names for asbestos based snow because before that they used to use cotton. But then they were like, oh, that's a fire hazard. So the firemen yeah. said, stop using cotton, use asbestos because it's flame retardant. But that makes sense, I suppose. You know what I mean? I'll take it. And it became an industry standard. Yeah, total sense. That makes That's why, like, you know, people die in fucking Hollywood because, you know... The only thing that stopped it was um, ah. the start of the World War. Look at oh, all of hell. that lovely snow on top of them. Come on, don't worry, Dorothy. Pick up all the snow and just sniff it. Just put it in your mouth and you're... It's fine. Yeah. Play. <laughs> so so, uh... so did, they, did the Scarecrow fall asleep there? Did he fall asleep as well? No, no, him... Uh, Scarecrow and Tin Man stay awake. I believe. Yeah, but and Tin Man is ruthless. Tin Man, like, is like, okay, he doesn't, okay, that's the current. Okay, go on, go on. Yeah. Uh, so, then the witch is like, damn it! But the thing I literally just did two seconds ago didn't work. Well, I have to try something better. I've tried to burn him out of it. I've tried to f- make him fall asleep. I don't know, flying monkeys? What's next? <laughs> so they make it out of the poppy field and jollily, perfectly fine. Uh, make it oh, down. Yeah. So she, oh, I love this bit. So she's like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to send a message. Uh, she hops on her little broom and she does. I love the uh, little doll thing that they get to fly around. It looks so, this is the cheapest part of it where they get it to like fly around the castle. And um, it's like, did did it did it. It's like obviously a little doll on a string. But it's so fun. I love that scene. I don't know why. It's just so it almost seems cute. Yes, in it is. the scheme of the Wait. rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. I don't think they meant to do. <laughs> I didn't do no. it. They meant just to look amazing, but it just turned yeah, out. Yeah, they're like, like oh, it's so going to be so scary seeing her like fly through the air. Like, oh my god, that's horrible. Have you ever seen Monkey Magic? Mm. Yeah. 
Oh my god, I love monkey. Yeah. You know when he's flying through the air on that cloud? He goes <laughs> Yes, it looks like that. Uh so we they finally get to the Emerald um uh, the Emerald City and they approach the doors and the first thing uh chap pops out of the door and goes, Go away! Yeah. Fuck off, basically. I don't want shit to do with you. And uh, it's the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Well, it's the... You could tell the way he's talking. Like, he, the moustache that they had on him was like a fake moustache. I mean, a huge, bristly fake moustache. And he like it kept getting in his mouth. He was saying every time he talked, it went inside his mouth. <laughs> and he kept biting off small hairs. You could that hear him when he's a, talking. That's a moustache, though. I like that. And he, Oh, no, I think he goes, Can't you read? And then he like points down to a sign. And then it's like, Bell out of order. Please knock. It's like, what? hang on, what? Uh, so they knock. And then he goes, hey. Uh, they have a little bit of a scuffle. And they go, hey, those are the ruby slippers. And then he goes, oh, get your shit in. So, That's so awesome. Different color. Why didn't you say so? Why didn't you say so? So the door is open. If it's that easy to get in through security, it's like, oh, you know what? Just wear some really nice shoes. The guy has a fetish for it. He'll let you in. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I got foot fetish. I got the guy has a foot fetish. He's like, ooh, can I can I actually have those to wear? So, um, oh. the, uh, so um, I'll give them back after you leave. The Then they get in the carriage, and the guy yeah. that, like, now I'm starting to think, wow, they were really low on actors. But no, it's the same guy. It's the marvelous... Mr. Wizard of Marvelous Oz. Professor Marvel. Professor Marvel. Professor Marvel. There he is. That's Xavier, right? Sex man. Yeah, that's like <laughs> sex man. Uh, Darren, we're cutting like you're you're looking like a Terrence and Philip character right there. Yeah. <laughs> Off to find some treasure. Hey, treasure. Hey, Let's search for treasure. I'm not your uh, buddy. So, hey, buddy. I'm not your buddy, guy. Hey, I'm not your god friend. I'm not your oh, friend, buddy. Oh, God, is that what that's from? Yeah. Oh, okay. Canadians. Oh, my God, it's the Canadian devil. So, let's move on from the carriage with the multicolored horse, which I think is a wonderful effect in this. Yes. Um, where they turn the horse different colors and stuff like that. How did they do that, Derry? Didn't they paint the horse? Did they painted they? the horse, yeah. A yeah. couple of horses. Oh my god. Those poor horses. Who didn't come away from cancer with this? Like <laughs> was, everybody just died the week afterwards. Um so they a stuff stuff here, stuff stuff there, a rub rub here, rub rub there, and they're all getting a good stuffing and a good oh, rubbing. Jello powder. Jello powder. For what? Yep. The horse of a different colour. They got oh. jello powder and they did a purple one and a red one or whatever. Oh, you mean jelly powder? Yeah, but American jello. Jello. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. If you ever want to paint a horse, jello powder. Cover it in jello powder. <laughs> so everybody's getting a bit of a sprucing up. Tin Man's getting a bit of a shining. And uh, Scarecrow's getting a little bit of stuffing. <laughs> and um, also, they're like, yeah, we can change your eye color if you want. We have that technology here. Um, so a bit uh, random. Yeah, you want to change your eye color? Uh, well, really? Okay. So they do that, and oh yeah, the uh, the cowardly lion gets a little bit of a ribbon in his head hair, and he gets some curls. I just love the way uh, Dorothy and the lion now have the same hairstyle. <laughs> I want hers. Uh, <laughs> so the witch starts uh, leaving off a bit of steam and puts a big message in the sky and when i was again sometimes when I, I forget bits in films you know if you haven't watched them in a long time and i was like what is she writing like surprise <laughs> i was like sir sir something what is it oh no oh. what oh it's surrender dorothy surrender surrender and then it should have been comma dorothy because <laughs> that means we that before <laughs> oh really is there a thing yeah on that? i was having a look oh, for okay. it because it's meant to be like surrender Dorothy, right? But not like are they telling Oz to surrender Dorothy? Yeah. Yeah. Darren, was that not a family guy skit? 
Yeah, that was the same thing. The Family Guy made so many, so many jokes about this, about this movie. Like, they're like, because the 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 scarecrow was like, do do we give her to her or does she want her? Yeah, like, and that's the that, same one when, when at the end of it she's like scarecrow in Family Guy. She's like, I miss you of all, and then Tim Man is like, oh, that's nice. We're just standing right here. <laughs> I love that with the lion. Yeah, I missed you most of all. So the um, the witch is making basically a big message in the sky for everybody to get. I, I assume that she's putting it there for the people of Oz to be like, oh, God, Dorothy, throw her outside, fuck her. Uh, but that but doesn't happen. They don't know who Dorothy is. None of the people from Oz know who she is. Who is this Dorothy? I, I love like random people named Dorothy getting fucked outside. No, mom, no. <laughs> it's the witch. She wants you. Get out. Um. My middle name is Dorothy. Kick him out too. So, Dorothy, they're all, get over in this room. They're all pointing up in the sky. Ah, up there. And uh, she she goes up to the guard, and he's also the the, uh, the Wizard of Oz. I wonder if he's got three paychecks for fucking right? three different jobs. He play, played like every character up until pretty much like past this point. He plays everybody. Um, and he's like, oh, I can't let you see in the great and powerful Oz. It's just not going to happen. Ain't nobody know how. But then, well, I think, no, he lets him in. He goes, oh, you're Dorothy. The, king, the uh, Wizard of Oz will want to see you. And this is where we have the lion song. And if I was a king uh, of the forest, not a sparrow. <laughs> and then so on and so on. Um... I love this song. I wish I could sing because I would sing these types of songs. Sure, you Darren, should. Darren, give us a song. What song? If I was a pair of... <laughs> that like Chewy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. You do like... A, he kind of like a, a Wookiee cross <laughs> lion thing. <laughs> um, and then he's very stern. I love, like this song is just so fun. Um, all of the songs in it are very fun, but this is my favorite, I think. Well, it's probably one of my favorites. Um, the Tin Man is just too good because he goes the poop poop. Um, so I did a, a lot of screenshots of this because I have so many good memories of it. And he makes so many hilarious faces in it. They put a cool, like, um, robe. Like, uh, it's a rogue. It's a, a rogue. It's a fucking rogue. Yeah. Yeah. Flowers. flowers. Yeah. And but it's the way. It, the way it's done, because it was made as a, like, it was actually, how it was said, it was made as, like, his, they were gonna, it was going to be on the back of, it was going to be a throw on the wall, they were going to pull it off, but they said, wouldn't it be cool if you walked towards it, and it was on the ground, they put it on him, like, because yeah. like, it made more sense, it was just, like, by accident. And the same with the, the same with the crown, he takes off the fucking vase, throws the sleeves, and he hits, he hits the, the vase, yeah, and he yeah. makes it the crown from. Brilliant. And I love... So they're all basically going, okay, the wizard is definitely going to be able to give us all this stuff. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to be the king finally. And I'm going to rule and I'll be the fair king of the forest. Um, lions don't live in forests. <laughs> they're jungle dwellers, as far as I'm aware. No, they're Sahara. Or what's Sahara? What's the words? Oh, I can't remember. The plains. They can They're in the African plains. Oh, oh plains. African plains? Like Africa air? This is so oh, I'll, I'll be, be your draw. captain, uh, the cowardly exactly lion. I just sit here and draw. So it, like... We're going out about 10,000 10, so... meters in the air. Oh, God. Dang. Dang. We take so anyway. this out of everything. <laughs> so uh, he goes <laughs> and he has... I got, I got so many pictures of this. But... <clears throat> then we get to the end of the song and the guard is there to burst his bubble going, nope, not going to be seen. Sorry, goodbye. And then Dorothy goes, well, oh, I guess there's nothing left to do but just have a cry and just feel sad about everything. And, and then yeah, your man literally has a, like a hose on the top of his head that like pour water. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh. 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 They're literally beating the shit out of Dorothy to get her to blubber. And this man is like, I'm not fucking crying on demand. Get a little bit of water up there. Stick a little hose up in my eyebrows. Uh, so he lets him in. Out of guilt. 
even though he is the fucking wizard. Like, yeah, what a fucking dude. He's like, guy. oh shit, I hope she doesn't get... I, I better put up my holograph in two seconds. So they finally get in, and this scene is fucking amazing. Um, the, the the way that they have the big massive head, the fact that you it's always obscured. Um, best, best joke in the movie is here. <laughs> when he's walked, the lion is walking, he's like... He's like, hey, who touched my tail? And your mom's like, that's you. You, you, because he, and he has a tail. He's oh, he's hand. gripping it. Yeah. <laughs> Who's touching my tail? Who's my tail? He's like, you have a tail. He's, but like, it's the acting of the, it's the acting of the actors. He's like, when he has a tail, he's wiping his eyes. <laughs> but that, that's it's like, that's funny. a thing you can do when you have a costume, not a fucking mocap dot on your head. Um, it's you can't do it. You know, imagine. Did you know it's in the start of that movie? Like, you probably didn't. When he comes out, like, when he, you know, when you see him, when you were saying that you see him in the forest, like, he walk, he jumps like a lion onto yep. two hands. Yeah, he jumps to whoever the stunt guy was, it wasn't Jack Haley. Uh, he jumps like a lion. And then obviously he jumps down into a trampoline, jumps up. But like, when you see him first, he does act, he does move like a lion. And that's fucking brilliant. I said, that's great. Anyway, like let's fast forward twenty five minutes. Like an Andy Circus. I bet. I bet they were like, okay, let's get Andy Circus to do that. There's like literally nobody else in Hollywood that can get down on all fours, except for all of. Oh no, wait. I was gonna make it. Never mind. I was gonna make. It, let's not make that joke. Anyway, um. Next slide. So Dorothy <laughs> makes her wish, oh. and then she says, "Hey, I want you to give me, bring me home." And then the Tin Man says, hey, I want you to give me a heart. And then the Scarecrow goes, hey, give me a brain. And then the lion gets too scared. He can't do shit. And he just faints. He's like, Bleh. So he's like, the Wizard of Oz basically is taking no shit. He's like, I don't want, no, I'm not, I'm not going to help you at all, basically. I'm not up for anything. Uh, you don't have anything that I want, um, except for... The broom of the wicked witch of the west. I want you to get that. But like, how arbitrary! I want you to go off and kill someone. Um, again, I want you to do murder again. Murder more people for me, Dorothy. A lot of people fucking look for murder in this movie. Right? La, awful lot of murder. But in the whiz, like in the whiz, the live TV show, and in the movie, they turn and say to Dorothy. Because the wizard or the whiz says to her, "Well, this is all your fault. None of this would have happened if you had to drop the house on your one." And then, like the, the scarecrow, the Tim and the line says, "This is all because of you." <laughs> I'm like, "Yes, it fucking is. It's all because of her." Is that Michael Jackson was in that? Yeah, Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah. The whiz is amazement. But then again, it's like fucking full of crazy. Like it's, it's much more a musical. Like it's basically yeah, made. Yeah. yeah. It's, well, a, it's, it's like great. some of the best it's, black singers at the time, I think, were in that. Tiana Ross, Michael Jackson, it's, I could name out fucking, Quincy Jones wrote and directed us. It's a, mm -hmm. uh, it's fucking, it's lethal, it's amazing. And then the live version is like when their Broadway is a big hit in world Broadway in the West End. It's a fucking phenomenal show. Then they did a, the live TV version of the Wiz, which I saw the other day, which is amazing as well. Um... But like I'd this, love to see how it like compares to this. Like, I think the music would be very different, but uh, very, very good. Like, it looks seems like a Brooklyn-y kind of thing. Like, hey, we're in New York. Do you know what it is? It's actually it's amazing because as much as it's kind of like a Motown version, hmm. you'd still know what it's based on, mm -hmm. and not just because not just because of the costumes, but I mean because of the essence of what this movie, The Wizard of Oz, is about. Like, you know, what I mean, it's a, uh, but it's just like black. Come on. Crack. I'm black. Oh, I'm black. <laughs> I'm black. Hey, and okay, here's a good example. Here's a great example. Yeah, that was a fantastic film based on really good and talented artists, and it was also just happened to be black, which was mm. great. You know, they all got together as black artists, but it wasn't like, I, hey, we need to make a black Wizard of Oz because I mean, that's what needs the, the world needs. Yeah. It's like, no, they just wanted I mean, to do it and they did I mean, it. I'm in Motown forever. I grew up on Motown, like uh, not just the Jacksons, because everyone says, oh, the Jacksons. No, I'm talking about Temptations. I'm talking about like then newer Lionel Richie and you're talking about like Stevie Wonder. You're talking, like, Earth, you're Wind and Fire. They're, they're Motown, I, aren't they? I grew up on Motown. Motown is, but like, 
the singers in the ways are just out of this fucking world. Like, you know what I mean? But even the guys who are not singers, like, everyone in that movie was just a superstar. Like, you know what I mean? Fucking superstar. Have you seen The Wiz, Jimmy, no? Yeah, no, I've seen a good bit of it, yeah. Like, I haven't um, seen it all the way through. Richard, Richard Pryor was the... was the, the was oh, the, Richard Pryor is in it. I do like Richard Pryor. So there you go. That, that says it all, you know what I mean? Fucking Richard Pryor, the man, the legend, the Wiz Who himself. Who's the wizard? Richard Pryor. Oh, he, he plays the, the wizard. Oh, okay. Yeah, he plays the wizard. But again, like in this, he's like motherfucker. A fake. Uh, yeah. 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 It's a fake. I, I would. It's I would like to say it's like Samuel Jackson should play the wizard in this in this version. Motherfucker. Oh, so well, we get the wizard, and he's basically like, "Yo, but uh, that's okay. I'm gonna do a Samuel Jackson impression for the wizard oh, and throughout the whole entire yeah. rest of this review. Yo, motherfucker. I want you to. Yeah, you put those in the recycling. Um. Better get that witch's broom for me, bitches. Motherfucking witches on this motherfucking land of Oz. So, uh, he then he goes away. And the lion runs out of the, the, the hallway and jumps through a window. And he's gone. He's fine. Uh, they then go into the forest to search for the witch to get the broom from her. And uh, I, I, I love the signs there where it's like uh, Witch's Forest, Witch's Castle, One Mile. I'd turn back if I were you. Uh, so they all go in and this is a fantastic scene. The um, Dorothy doesn't have anything. I think she just has her fists. Uh, the Scarecrow has a gun, a revolver. Uh, the Lion has a... Like one of those. Oh no, no, he's a net, and he also has one of those um ex like bug extinguishers. <laughs> you know, I thought it was a mallet, but it's not. It's like one of those, you know, push things for bug extinguishers. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the Tin Man has a big wrench. Perfect. Uh we see some elves. Spooky. And then we see the witch commanding all of the flying monkeys. What a fantastic idea! Like. Flying, flying monkeys. monkeys. Yeah. Is there a reason they're flying monkeys? It seems like it seems very random. It seems really weird, but how terrifying. How terrifying would a load of flying monkeys go? Like, imagine. Just, uh, okay, uh, monkeys. We Okay, the witch has loads of monkeys. Uh, okay, how do we make them more terrifying? Put them on wings. Like rabid monkeys descending from the sky. <sighs> So like, are they? Were they? Were they? I say it's so bad. I say this. Were they small people in costumes, or what was that like? Was that? These actually, yeah. That's hard to say because they're all hunched over. Yeah, Maybe they got a load of hunchbacks. Fuck's sake! They got a load of hunchbacks uh, together. Jesus Christ! Uh, okay, you're, you're the monkeys. I'm assuming they were like. I'm assuming they were small people, right? In costume. Yeah. Little people, yeah. More than likely if they had that many in cast already. I'm saying that. Because that's what it's... Okay, I'm just... Hey, we got a bunch of uh, small monkey-looking little people over here. What do you want me to do with them? Um, I don't know. Just stick a load of extra wings on them. We'll find something. Let's just make them, let's just make them what they are. Monkeys. Monkeys. Flying monkeys. So, uh, the flying monkeys... Fly in the sky, and I think again, this is a fantastic scene where you see like all the, like, the bombers. Where the lion, the lion ran and jumped through the window. Did we? Yeah, we did that part. Yeah, yeah. That was. And I had forgot about that, and then when I saw him, like he was, I was saying when he was running away, I was like, that guy's fucking moving his ass off. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit! And he dove through the window. I was like, I didn't fucking remember that bit. Jesus. But then, and then afterwards, like the scarecrow has the gun, like the revolver. What the fuck? I go, I go back to that picture for a second because That's... I think it's hilarious. He looked what well the... chuffed for himself. Like, like... You can't understand because when, like, your man had, like, forget the revolver, but what was it, the fucking giant wrench your man had? What, like, where the fuck did that come out of? No, the, yeah, well, the wrench is one thing, uh, no. but the bug <laughs> extinguisher is the other thing. But were, were those guns out even back then when he was fucking, why, was, why did he have a gun all of a sudden? I love the gun. Why does he have a, where did he get the gun from? 
it's like this fantasy land, but then for some reason, no, I have a go, I have a go. It's like, yeah, Jesus, that, Scarecrow, what, you didn't need to do saw, that. I only saw that. I only saw the picture of God, and Amy was sitting across me. I said, Amy, this, I had to pause. Like, <laughs> he has a fucking gun in his hand. She's like, no, he doesn't. I said, he fucking has a gun in his hand. I said, where the fuck did the gun come out of? It's like another Anchorman oh. reference, but uh, Brick, is that a grenade? Like, where did you get that grenade? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's like Scarecrow where did you get that gun I don't know oh. I killed a man um, maybe, that was, maybe that was like a maybe that was like an in-depth like joke they were planning in there imagine because like imagine you as the audience back then and well I, I guess it wouldn't have made that much of a big stir back then they were like okay no, he's a gun I, I didn't notice it like up to the, the, the last <laughs> and I watched that more twice but I only watched it like and I was like you know it's kind of one of the things when you see it you're like no, he doesn't have a gun in his hand. Why well, you can pause gun? it now. You can pause it. Back then, they were like, was that a gun? And then it just split and goes to the next scene. You're like, where the fuck would he get a gun? Because, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sorry, I just, Calm down, I just Scarecrow. Most, like, I'd love to be able to talk to people who were involved in making, who write writing that script, or who anyone who was involved in making it, and say to them, please explain to me the gun. Just say, like... The, the script writer sitting there going, okay, and uh, you know what? I'll sneak in. I, you know, I, I, I bet they won't even put it in for the film. I bet they won't even put the film in. I, okay, and then Scarecrow pulls out a gun. <laughs> and then it happens. They see it. Because it's one of the things when I saw it, I was like, right, there's no way. And I was like, I have to, like, clearly it's in front of me. It's a gun. But I'm like, why does he have a gun in his fucking hand? Like, your man has like a fucking something ring. to do with Bazooka. crows scaring the crows. Fuck no, but the lion with... has like a big like bug extinguisher with a net, <laughs> so it doesn't, I don't think it makes any things. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So she sends she, the the witch sends off the flying monkeys, and again, I love the the uh, shots in this where it looks like these bomber planes coming down. Um, <laughs> they capture Dorothy, bring her off, and they. Rip all of the hay out of like all the straw at a scarecrow. They threw they threw took my legs out and they threw them over there and they threw my brain. Do you know what? I movies nowadays have to fuck me up because like straight away when I watched that movie, I just kept laughing because not because of what's happened in the scene because I couldn't enjoy it. I kept thinking of Step Brothers. Remember that scene? In the oh the yeah, he's like, you what? cut your brother in half. Oh no, no, I'm just thinking that's, that's the other film. Like... That's no, Dewey that's Cox. Not. But I mean. But even the more, like, what the, the like, the, the effects were amazing because, like, the fact that when you see Toto run and he, whatever, little person, monkey, or whatever, the thing grabs him and then they show him flight, they show him walking and flying up the air, obviously, with, with wires and stuff. But I mean, the effects were fucking brilliant. Amazing. So good. Like. Um, uh, and then she gets captured and brought back to the witch. And the witch is like, yo, yo. That's oh. a little bit afterwards, but I love that little song. That's like a, a, one of those earworms. Oh, we, oh, we, oh. Um, it's so cool and ominous. Uh, so the witch is like, hey, you're staying here and I'll basically... What? What is... Why is she... Like, I'm going to kill you, basically, in this amount of time. Um, this is the part with the, the cool effect... This is like a special effect where they've obviously drawn in per frame, you know, like the yellow sparks on the shoes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, I love I that effect. Bits so like that I forgot, like, I forgot all about that. And when I saw it, I was like, that's fucking deadly. That's really cool. So she puts a timer and says, you'll be like, is, is it like you'll be dead in this amount of time? Yeah, you'll, you'll no longer be living in this amount of time. Yeah, I'm no longer living. That's a terrible, terrible. <laughs> but, uh, sorry, I, I your, your cowardly up. line was much better. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's that's Wookie. <laughs> put him uh, up. So, put him up. Put him up. The best part about the line is when he says. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way it's like, how did he come up with that? It's like, do lions do that? Maybe he has a cat. Maybe his cat does that. Well, it's it's the whole, it's the whole, he's just been, like you said, a bully when he's like, put him up. 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 
Yeah, I thought you won't have Bahama back. But it's the fact that what he's doing is his tail is swishing behind him the whole time. But when when she slaps him in the face, he's what you hit me for? I wasn't gonna bite him. <laughs> but he says which I forgot, he says, Am I bleeding? <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking brilliant man this this is why I love this movie because it's like for years I loved the scarecrow he was like all flimsy and fun. and then I liked the thin one because the top the acting was good but just now in my 30s I'm actually just loving the fucking line I'd love as you get look. older you learn to appreciate it the you learn to things appreciate in the lie the lying like, oh, fucker uh, so we get Dorothy looking into the big crystal ball and um, Auntie M is still going Dorothy! Dorothy! It's like she's been missing for a month. Uh, she's long gone. So, yeah. Toto escapes and manages to find um, Tin Man, Scarecrow and the Lion. And they're all climbing up the mountain towards the Witch's Castle. At this part, did you notice when when the Tin Man is like holding the uh, the, the tail of... Um, the lion, and yeah. he has that like thing on his arm. Yeah. You, uh, you can see this. He's like had a he had a strap around him. Like it was a big, huge leather strap, and it was like yeah, yeah. that don't sound right. He had a leather strap, and he had like a big, huge. Uh, you know, he like it was like a big steel plate attached to his back mm-hmm. as well. But that's what because but it was like blatant when he was hanging off. Yeah, yeah. But, like, it's fucking. But even you can see him as that. Like then it zooms out sh- or comes out of the shot, and you can see him like falling off to yeah, the yeah. makeshift. Mount. It's, that's fucking brilliant. Like, like those, it's those details that are fantastic. So we get him going to the the castle, and this is the oh we oh. No. And they're but peering has, down, going, "How are we going to get in there?" Has Toto escaped yet? To, Toto has escaped, yeah, and then uh, has okay. basically found uh, the three guys. Time's yeah. running out, and then these green. Um, men who we get really no explanation as to why they're green but they are, they're green um, and they try and ambush Scarecrow, Lion and uh, the Tin Man there's going, love... cough... there's going to be a cough machine going off in a second so just in case you hear mm, De- just for a second so we get the Tin Man, Lion and uh, Scarecrow Dressed up as the guards, they basically beat the shit out of the guards after they try and ambush him. I like that little, uh, kind of like subversion where you're like, Oh, perfect! Uh, so they managed to get in, sneak in, and then hack down the door and break in to um, rescue Dorothy. The witch is like, Haha, your time is up, Dorothy! And hey, green men, attack them! And they try and escape. But nope, the witch is back. She's going to light you on fire. So she tries the old lighting them on fire trick again. You and, light, uh, them on. light them on fire. So it doesn't go very well in this instance. Um, the scarecrow gets actually lit on fire. And then Dorothy throws a load of water. And little did she know that random buckets of water lying around a castle... Would uh, would stop the witch. No, in the she would be more crazy. Careful. Yeah, but in the right. Oz and Powerful, they go to go through this a little bit more, and I thought this is pretty cool. It's the only thing I thought was good, because when she cries, it's her feelings, and actually, Midikonis, when she cries, the water burns her when it goes down. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's her her. I don't know, understand, but like that's a little bit more backstory than they. Well, she uses fire a lot. She's like that fire element i guess you know if you want to take it just as simple like as the that human torch, torch of the wizard of oz or could it be that if you dumped a witch back to the witch trials true hey that yeah that would make sense i'll Possibly. go with that one let's just go with that because i don't. I know like that to... explanation yeah. uh so <laughs> it's more I'm, intellectual <laughs> i'm yeah. melting I built it. What a world! What a world! What a world! So, the 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 green guys are like, oh, thank fuck, she really was annoying us. She she literally blackmailed us. That's the only reason. She had naked pictures of us. We couldn't leave. <laughs> um, 
so they now pledge allegiance to Dorothy because they're like I don't know why why do they do this I suppose it's like the um, little aliens in Toy Story leader you have freed us you are our leader (laughs) so they go back to the Wizard of Oz with um, the broom and says, hey, we did that thing that you said was pretty much impossible. And yeah. he's like, uh, no, nah, I changed my mind. It's uh, I don't want it anymore. I got a broom. I ordered one. It came quicker than you were able to come and bring that. <laughs> so um, I got I have Amazon. Amazon Prime. I forgot. It's right here. <laughs> it's It's behind the curtain. Really? Let me check. No, no, don't go behind the curtain. I, I, it's not behind the curtain. It's behind Ignore a different curtain. Ignore that man behind the curtain. <laughs> Ignore that man. Uh, yeah, Toto goes over. Toto does a lot of the legwork in this, doesn't he? Toto's like linking up everybody. Um, ignore that man behind the curtain. Um, which they don't. They don't ignore the man behind the curtain. It was this man all along. Yep, this man. Thank you. Don't know his actual name. That guy, uh, oh, what, like Mr. Marvelous, no. Mr. Marvelous, the great, no. wonderful, marvelous. Uh, his name is Frank Morgan. Frank Morgan. Frank Morgan. The ah. actor or the character? Oh, no, his real name is Frank Morgan. In the film or in real life? No, in real life. His birth given name is Frank Morgan. That's what he told me anyway. The character or the actor? The actor. Okay. The actor. In the film. Yeah, fucking actor. Son. The actor, son. But we don't know his real name in the film. What's his name, real name in the film? Oz. Who knows? It says here he's the Wizard of Oz. Wizard uh, of Oz. Uh, That's what his name is. He's uh, actually... Yeah, no, his name is Frank Morgan. And, um... Well... Yeah. So... No. Yeah. Go on, sorry. Yeah. Go on. No. So we, uh, Dorothy goes over and goes, I can't believe you betrayed me like that. Man that I've never seen before in my life. You look awfully familiar. I feel like we've met four or five times. She never says to him, or it's never fucking, I don't understand it. So is it, it's clearly supposed to be him, right? Yes, yes, it is. But is it, is it supposed to be him? So I don't, I can't remember in the book, but I don't think it's meant to be him. I think this is, again, the film trying to encourage you into believing it's a dream rather than it being real life. Right. Cause, yeah, because then she says when she wakes up, oh, you were there, and you were this guy, and you were this guy, and you were... Like, so I think it's... I don't know okay. who the hell you are. <laughs> so he's not supposed to be... The, it's, the, it's, 700 it's characters because, is amazing. If you think about it like this, I think that the, the uh, writers of the movie tried to put it like she had encountered this man before... And yeah, this yeah, is yeah. like I get you. I get you. her in her head. Eddie Eddie Murphy. They made such a big fucking deal with Eddie Murphy playing like everyone in coming to America. This guy was fucking doing it fifty years no. before. Um uh, Doctor Strange Love. That's been done. Kind Hearts and Cornets, that's been done. Like Eddie Murphy was like the seventh person to do it out of everybody. Oh, but uh let's move on from Eddie Murphy. Ooh, says Wizard of Oz, you've caught me red handed. And uh, then he pays the. He basically bribes them. Hey, oh, you know what? Here's the diploma, Scarecrow. That will yeah, fix you've you. Had all along. You've had a heart all along. You've had a brain all along. <laughs> That's basically it. Hey, I didn't. You didn't need to come to me at all. You here's the diploma from the Kansas National University or some shit. And um, yep, I know all the maths. It was that easy. All I needed was the confidence to know knowledge. I didn't actually need to know knowledge. Uh, and then the uh, lion gets a big medal of courage. And yep, he's courage now. He's very courageously. And well, then technically, it's a life lesson. He was like, he stuck through it with Darty all along. You know what I mean? So come on, Jamie. What was the one <laughs> in Family Guy where they actually get him a real heart? It's like, oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, they got him like a, a heart with a clock in it. And I wished he turned yeah. around and went, oh, but that, he got a medal and he got a degree. Can I, this is a clock. I'm like made of this. Uh, so Dorothy doesn't get anything. 
but what about me? And then he says, well, I have this giant air balloon that I guess we could take together and I'll we'll see go back to It's a better seven day trip in my air balloon and I have very limited food. Would you like to come along? And she says, yes. It's uh, the State Farm of Omaha. So thankfully, Toto escapes and she doesn't get in the big balloon to bring him back to uh, uh, Kansas. Because how fucking shitty would you feel being after going through all of that and then being told, oh, the shoes did it. All all along. You could have done it all along. It's like, it's like, oh, did I not? I thought I said that to you when back in the Munchkin village. Did you seriously spend all this time walking here? Oh, okay. Well, that was a waste. Uh, No. I'm going to miss you, Mr. Tin Man. I'm going to miss you, Cowardly Lion. And I'm going to miss you most of all. Hey, standing here. Um, you know, he said, like family guy that's why I love family because they, they said everything we were thinking that's okay yeah. that's okay we're only, we're only stand here you're going to miss him most of all that's okay <laughs> so uh, oh. we we then get the there's no place like home there's no what place like home never. there's no place like home and she's back in bed with a nice little cold towel over her head Cold hot press. Oh, that's it. A cold hot press. Or is it hot cold press? No, cold compress. Oh, cold compress. Yeah. What's the compress about? That's the term. Oh, okay. The term we use. Uh, so Aunt May is like, oh, thank God. You literally had a concussion and uh, you got knocked the fuck out. But okay, it's I'll put, I'll put a cold compress on top of your head. Um, and it feels much better, I'm sure. So everybody's happy, and you were there, and you were there. And then no, I looked, no. if, if if she pointed at the camera and went, and even you, and I would have <laughs> went, ah, oh, I was there. I was along for the ride. <laughs> you see you would. Your man who plays this character, Bob, or was it Ray Bob? Bolger, is it? He looks Bob Racer. Yeah, but well, he looks no, at the camera. Up. So, like, when when Ray she Bulger. says, "Yeah, yeah," but he, I don't know if you have it there, but he actually accidentally looks at the camera as he's standing up. He like when he's been moved out of the way, he blatantly looks at the fucking camera for about three, like, about four or five seconds. Yep. Hey, and Bob, he might, don't it, block the guy. What? Oh, shit. yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Fuck yeah, shit. But um, yeah, it's another little thing that I was after seeing. I was like, fucking hell, let's. Brought me a little closer to the inside of the film. Inside of the film, you connected with that guy. You're like, I connected I, I with that guy. It. He was looking at me into my soul. Into your soul, and I'll be there next time. And then that's the end. It's a good family film with a lot of political undertones and uh, some some fantastic Technicolor. But what, like, at the end of it, if you're saying it's so political? The message then is there's no place like home. So what is the message? Don't bother trying. Hmm? No, no, the, the no place like home is like um, I don't I don't know if that's the political part. I know the part I know the part about the government being a piece of shit and being basically like, hey, we're just a man behind a curtain. You, when you, when you actually are good enough to show you are good enough to be seen by the Wizard of Oz, you actually don't need the Wizard of Oz. You know, when, when when you actually make yourself so good and you've you've achieved and overcome all these strifes, yep. you see the Wizard of Oz, you find you out really the think Wizard that of Oz was inside of all of us. That kind of bullshit. But in a better Stop message way. Stop the fucking, shut the front door there now. Come on, you, you fucking reach shut in for shit. Shut the front right door, now. at the window. See, it just felt to me like she was trying to literally follow her dreams and at the end was told, go home and stay there. Wow, we've seen a lot of these films lately like that. Um, we've seen uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. It's like, don't follow your dreams. Stick with <laughs> what you know. Uh, we've seen... What other films that are really discouraging? Like, please don't leave... Uh, Beetlejuice? Yeah. That's like, hey, home is where the heart is. Don't ever leave. You're stuck here and be happy with it. 
Yeah, actually. This, hmm. And maybe in Not misery, he should have stayed home too. <laughs> hey, he should have. He should have never went to that hotel. So, what a wonderful film! I loved it. I enjoyed that. Uh, any final thoughts? Do we have any final pieces of snippets of information that we'd like to add in um, for the purposes of commentary and such? No, no, I have no comment. I just thought it was awesome. Like, I knew I was going to enjoy it, but I love the fact that I get to look at it more. Something I would have never done, lads, ever watching movies. Like, looked at it really in depth. Like, like unless you really, really fucking love something. But that's why I love doing this podcast for everyone who's watching, everyone who's going to watch this podcast. Because we know loads of people are going to watch it. Right, guys? Right, guys? Right, guys? So many. Like, I'll be watching pick, it. Yeah, well, I get to pick out stuff that I would have never, ever noticed about it. Like, the gun, for instance, the scarecrow's hand. Like, forever that will be with me now. And every time I watch on Good. Christmas, I will be looking out for that fucking gun. Um, no, they'll probably CGI it out nowadays, and they'll probably uh, have them with uh, a marshmallow instead. A flower instead. in his hand or something. A, a flower, like, yeah. It's like, like, one of those things that, that's why I like watching things like this, because this is why I love this whole idea, because things like I would never watch, I would never watch Wonderful Life, even though it's one of the greatest movies I've ever seen now. Never watched it. Existence is, if we watched an earlier episode called, or we watched an earlier movie called Existence in an earlier episode, it was love a fucking great movie. Great movie. Like um, hey I mean, Darren, you named all of my films just there. Yeah, but no, but like, <laughs> thanks. Then there's movies that we thought were like years ago. Like you know what? Look, we watched The Crow, and even though we watched <laughs> yeah, Crow, Jesus, but even Christ. though it quite wasn't awesome what it was years ago, I still enjoyed it. I still enjoyed the ca- cre- like campness of it. I still enjoyed the weirdness of it. I still enjoyed that it was a weird movie. But I did. What's I that crappy totally saying it. in it? It, it's not, it doesn't rain Can't forever. rain all the time. Can't rain all the time. <gasps> Johnny, <laughs> Johnny, whatever his name is. Draven. Eric Draven. Eric Draven. Like, but you look at like some of the movies he watched. I would have never looked in, in depth into the, like fucking Beetlejuice. Like that was a fucking great movie. That was, and I knew it was a great movie. But like the fact that we get to in, look in depth in these things is what, like, is why I love this whole idea. This movie especially, when you said like, a Wizard of Oz, like well, I would never talk. But now I'm now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, why would you not have picked the Wizard of Oz, Jamie? Um, pick it. It's one of my. What? Yeah. Like now I is got. That, to, is I'm that one of those? Are you doing one of those? Am I? Uh, yeah. Bit, you, no, bit? no. Well, straight away, I was I was thinking like, this is a great idea to find out. I have no one to listen to the soundtrack on your earphones just randomly out of nowhere. So like. <laughs> well, what do you listen to, Jamie? Oh, the Wizard of Oz soundtrack. Wizard of Oz, right? Yeah, on repeat. Well, like, like, but that was a great idea for me to like be like, all right, I wonder what I can pick up in this movie if I can pick up that. You know what I mean? So I'm looking forward to like, I'm looking forward to whatever episodes we do in the future. Like, I'm really looking forward to them. Can't wait. Two the more we do, the, the more we do, the drunker we get, and I'm sure we'll shit talk about a lot of stuff. And oh, sorry, by the way, sorry, the gripe that I had, and th- obviously I know it, it can't be that much of a gripe if I could only raise it now. At the end, I, I had forgotten that she goes back to the wizard twice. And I, in my head, I had mixed it all into one encounter. So I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, she'd oh, send her off and get her to come back again. And then go, oh, you didn't even need to do it in the first place. I was like, that's bullshit. Uh, but that only that part that I had a problem with. The rest was great. Okay. That's a small so, group. <laughs> so, I... Will now commence the rating of the film. Yes. Are we ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. I am going to give this film a 9.5 um, wizards out of 10 wizards. I'll, and it's like a little person for the one of the wizards is the 0.5. I'll give it. I'll give it nine wizards and a midget out of ten. Darren, I give it six. Is that is no. that like 12, 12 midgets standing on top of each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I like. I liked it. I liked it. But I say, like, out of all the movies you watched, 
Like, I'm not fucking blown away. I'm not like, oh my God, I found a revelation about this movie. Six? Hang on a second. I was just trying to think of a joke to say, but six? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Look, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I did, but I didn't fucking love it. And I was like, oh my God, it was amazing. It's a, do you know what? No, 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 no. Do you know what I do? That's a controversial rating. No, we'll give it a seven and a half. We'll give it a solid seven and a half. How about that? Seven and a half. That's my final. That's my final. Talk out of you, Darren. And a half midgets, seven and a half I don't. I don't feel like I need to apologize for the Wizard of Oz. I think it's been out long enough for eighty years. It's it's an old person by this stage. This give it. Is, give it. Give it saying, it's been out for more. fucking eighty years. So, seven and a half midgets is pretty good. Seven and a half midgets. That's like three point two five. We'll go with that. I'm lowering the rating. Derry. Yeah. Eight ruby slippers. Eight ruby oh. slippers. Wow. Hey, I gave it the highest rating this week. I normally give it lower than you guys. Eight ruby slippers. We got a seven there from Mr. Stingy Reviews. Only by peer uh, pressure. Uh, yeah, I did peer pressure yeah. that extra midget <laughs> out of him. Um, and then a, a 9.5 from myself. And I very rarely give it even, you know, I, you know, well, when it's my movie, I kind of tend to rate it a little bit higher. Uh, so, <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. We had a fantastic day today, um, chatting and shit talking about uh, The Wizard of Oz. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're going to take a little Let's bit a of a picture. look. Yeah, let's take a little bit of a look at the picture. And this time I added back in my camera, so or my uh, my chat, so now I can oh, talk while <laughs> we're looking at it. And uh, yeah, wonderful. Hey, oh, I love the slippers at the end. I love the uh, the ruby slippers. Very good. Derry, what Derry, what is the the wavy thing? Like I know, like you know, from her midsection here. Yeah. Or here. No, 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 no. The, the, like it's like a sheet for all the world. Yeah, the ribbon's ribbon? coming off the hat. Perfect. Okay, that's for, it's fucking awesome. awesome. It's so good. So fucking. Do you know what? What well, I love about your pictures, and I will say this to yeah. you: no matter when I look at them straight away, I can tell. Obviously, I can fucking we know what we're talking about. But I mean, if you didn't know what we're talking about, you'd know what that was. <laughs> fucking so good. I couldn't do any more faces. I'm like, I've, I've drawn girls' faces the last couple of times, and I give I, I give that nine <laughs> So yeah, it's looking amazing, and it's going to be up on our Instagram and our Twitter and uh, all of the good accounts. Um, so do make sure to check in once it's a hundred percent done and perfected. So uh, yeah, thanks again for joining us this week. We've been real shade. Next week, what's our film going to be? Derry announce the film. Oh, it's perfect. Next week, back to my Kevin Smith fangirl days. To Dogma. <sighs> Love a little bit of dogma. Yeah, it should There's be an interesting one person that we need to see in this movie, and it's I won't. It remind it like rhymes with smashing muse. So. <laughs> yes, I like Alanis Morissette too. Mm-hmm. So we'll see you next week, and everybody. Alan Rickman. Alan Every, Rickman. Just everyone. Alan everyone. Rickman. <laughs> So we'll see you next week, guys. Watch Dogma and then do a little bit of shit talking in in the chat, I'm sure. Uh, And when we'll be giving it our lovely rating. So next week, seven o'clock, same bat time, same bat channel. And uh, yeah, have a lovely rest of your afternoon, everybody, or night, or goodbye. Bye. Bye.